Alright, I'm Chris. This is a uh, 2022 10HD. I'm originally from California. My home record is now Nevada, but I basically live on the road in my trailer. <laughs> So I uh, retired after 20 years in the Army, and this is my home on wheels. Uh, so basically I've modded, modded it to make it how I need it to, for my lifestyle. Uh, if I go boondocking and I got a generator, got a 200, amp, 200 watt solar panel, I got a 200 amp hour lithium battery, got Victron everything in there, got a 500 watt uh, Phoenix uh, solar, or not solar, um, inverter. inverter, yeah. And then that allows me to get all my juice that I need for the road when I'm out and about. Now we're right here in a fly patch and I apologize for that, but I'm really excited to see the mods that somebody who lives in their trailer makes. I already see some very practical things. <laughs> yeah, I put magnets on this right here so it just I can mount it to either one of the fenders and I mean it's it's got some heft to it before it actually breaks off. Now what type of chair does someone who lives full time in a teardrop camper use? <laughs> it's all about the comfy chair, man. <laughs> you know, when you spend a lot of time out here, you go from the dollar store chair <laughs> to like, no, maybe it is a big investment yep. worthwhile. Buy yeah. something a little more expensive, but you're gonna need it. So you got awnings and awnings and awnings. Yep. Um, what is this one over here? So they're all Iron Man four by four awnings. Perfect. Uh, I got the two eight foots on the side and then the rear is the six and a half. Now we call this one the Michael Potash. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is the 80-20 rear mount that you got a yeah, so awning over your galley. And I actually put quick releases on it. So when I'm driving down the road, I actually, when I pack up the site, the rear awning comes off and I store it inside the cabin. So I have less drag on the trailer. <laughs> so the Iron Man quick release, is yeah, they, it comes, they're handy? It comes right off, it's super handy. Um, now, this is one of the things that when you, you spend a lot of time, you know, I'm not talking four weekends a year, when you spend a lot of time, you really need quality chairs, tables, mm -hmm. they take a beating. Um, the King Camp is not inexpensive. Nope. But, uh, I got it for Christmas. <laughs> yeah, oh, perfect. What to give the full timer that has everything. Uh, yeah. That's an amazing table. Yeah. I've heard nothing but the best. It, wor it works, it. so it folds up so small and everything. And then I've uh, modded the heck out of this tra the, the galley area here. Oh, here we go. So before I even started living in the trailer, I didn't even take it out once and I ripped out the entire galley area. So I've got the, my little, my booze shelf with my cooking stuff up there as well. And then I built a custom slide out for the Camp Chef oven and stove. I'm very familiar with those sliders. <laughs> I yep. love that when people do this, they, they put the C-channel that lifts up both, it's exactly. much more so convenient, much easier. gives you a pull handle. Yep. You have the camp chef, so you have the oven And this is the pro the version cooktop. too. Oh. So it, so it auto controls the thermostat for the uh, for the oven. Very nice, I wanna peek at how you did your gas connection here, <laughs> yeah, cause yeah. I'm very <laughs> yeah. familiar with that mod. Um, yep. And your hose is tucked in, nice job. Mm -hmm. Now it looks like you used some like reclaimed wood. Uh, so this is, uh, it's not reclaimed, it's, oh, it's, it's the um, paneling from Home Depot. It's made to look reclaimed. So it's like the whole, it was this whole entire panel and this was just scrap pieces that I used for that to make it kind of blend together. And then this is custom epoxy that I did myself for the countertop oh. here to give a little faux marble Can look. Can you click that light on? Yeah. I think it's coming through. But And then yeah. uh, a boo shelf, right? Yeah, the boo shelf. Uh, a man of singular taste. Well, so I bought oh, those. Oh, the I, 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 They're all labeled. Things. Yeah, all so right. each one is less like the probably got, you know, Malibu, is that Fireball, JMO, and Tequila. Okay, <laughs> you, you know how to party. <laughs> um, so I'm impressed, first of all, I gave you very little warning here. It's not like you came here to gussy up, but when you are spending 365, I mean, it's too expensive to eat out. You know, you're, you're doing a lot of yep. cooking here at camp, and that's why maybe that little range top wasn't enough. Yep. Um, you're doing a lot of baking and stovetop cooking on this. Mm -hmm. Definitely helps out a lot. Now, every other full-timer I've talked to, or somebody that spends a lot of time, you also probably have uh, a, like a hiker set to cook with, right? Like a uh, portable camp stove or no. anything? So I want, I, I'm going to visit family here in, like next week and I have a backpacking white gas stove yeah. and it's in my storage unit. So I'm going to dig through it and find it because uh, I have on the side of the awning here, I made a 
tarp that I can attach to either side if the yes. wind gets too strong. But even sometimes then, for one reason or another, I can't use the tarp, yep. and it's too freaking windy, or the wind's just, and this even this nothing what to I like. Was gonna, you know? <laughs> this is what I was talking about. It's usually most people find they also need like a something to put out on the table somewhere. They move away from their right. campsite, make a cup of coffee, or mm -hmm. <laughs> just boil some water for some ramen or something. You know? Exactly. <laughs> just... So you, this has been your primary cooking source on the road. Right. Yep. This is the Camp Chef Pro. Very cool. You want, can you show us this Iron Man room you have? Yeah, yeah so I got this. Oh, pause. Oh. Can't go past an ice co without talking about it. Uh, Dan Foss compressor, 44 yep. quart. And this is, no, this is the uh, 60 quart. This oh, is the, uh, the, fri the, the, the fridge too. and freezer. And I got them dual, dual controls on there. So this is running off your life post setup, 200 amp hour? Yeah, so I plugged, I plumbed in an outlet over here on the side. And that's so I just got a little extension cord basically. I just plumbed in an outlet right there. Okay, SAE. Yeah, and then yeah. I would say that way I can plug this in wherever I, you know, in the kitchen area. So 200 watts of solar, 200 amp hour of lipo, and this guy runs all the time. Yeah, so I running this and the TV and lights from when the sun goes down to when the sun starts coming up and charging the battery again, I get down to like 80, 85 percent, and usually by like noon, one o'clock, I'm full charged again. And that's the slowest charge part of your cycle. Yeah. So I mean, if you got down to 50 percent, it charges that much. Yeah, faster. it would it would charge you yeah. faster because it's you know more power in the day. Okay, so I yeah. stopped you because I almost stepped over a really nice refrigerator. But uh, I've also back... also if you sorry, uh, yeah. I modded the fridge too. I had to put wheels on there because this thing weighs a ton. So I oh, welded so up I in... welded up a little bracket and put wheels on there and. All that fun stuff, so I could just roll this sucker around and I'm getting it. Now you are the only campsite here that is on concrete. Yeah. I think this is the ADA <laughs> the site. Only one. <laughs> but um, it's at least nice to roll your cooler around. Yeah. Nice. So. Yeah. And then so I did the uh, little mod here that Sam mentioned for uh, keeping the uh, what you call it, keeping tension up here. Uh, normally I only put this out when it's uh, when it's windy or really rainy, but I happen to be drying my uh, my bath towel right there, so. <laughs> Putting a little extra weight on there so it helps to keep it, you know, square. So we've been branding some of our mods by where, where they came from, if we can. So when he says the Sam, we're talking Adventures of Memory Maker Sam. He's a friend. He's been on the channel. If you have these awnings, this is the failure point. And Sam talks about this on his channel. I should uh, post that video. But giving uh, this, I mean, was this a paint? paint yes, yeah, a paint, paint rod. Yeah. yeah. So a little extra support in the rain, and then you mm. pitch the roof, right? Right. Just, and then also, if it's really, if it's like crazy windy. I'll actually tie one of my cables right here down to a stake in the ground and to actually give it the extra leverage wire. and all that fun stuff. Nice. So yeah. you have the ARB with the floor. Yep. Then again, uh, I also did the mod on the door. <laughs> oh, okay. So this is also yeah, sand, also another sand another sand mod. Yeah, <laughs> so that. you're you're not shy around a sewing machine. Nope. So this is another one we've shown on the channel before, uh, but to actually custom wrap. And seal this to the side of your teardrop. This is an HD, so it's got two doors. Um, it allows a little climate control. Mm -hmm. This room here can be heated or chilled slightly. Chilled slightly. <laughs> this is really nice. And I'll tag people back to Sam's channel for this as well. But uh, so you have some experience. You did this with a hot knife and a sewing machine. Yeah. Yep. And what type of channel did you wrap the door with? Uh, it's, so the top was the regular stuff. The side is that 3M the uh, little rain gutter type channeling stuff. And it just allows you to tuck it in right. and make a nice secure connection. Now mm -hmm. you extend the bottom. There's yeah, with a piece of wood on the bottom there with the uh, pressure treated. Yeah, pressure, something that's not gonna rot. But mm -hmm. um, this one is beyond my skill level. I can't, <laughs> um, I can't sew anything, but it, it's, the finished product is really, really impressive. And mm -hmm. for somebody who lives in their rig, this is more than a luxury. This is- uh, And the, uh, the dog ramp here is actually Super awesome. It's just got a couple little hooks on here and shelving with oh, carpet and zip ties. White epoxy yeah. shelving, and yard sale find. Super and, cheap and easy to make and, and it's more than hand. And you cut a U-bolt. There's a couple of U-bolts <laughs> on there for that and then a couple of I-bolts right there into the into the door and that's what hooks it in place. I love it. Yeah. All right, so on the inside here, I've modded a little bit. Uh, I got the ones, the, this one's the, uh, like, I can't material that is, but it's magnetic. It's and like Reflex Tech, right? Reflex Tech, there we go. And it's got a little R value. A little bit. Uh, 
but it, mostly it's you're sleeping in curtains. Because well, because so basically a lot of campsites don't have space to put an awning on both sides. Yes. So if I'm not having an awning, the the extra sun and also that gives me a little more privacy with the blackout curtain on this side. And we were dabbling. We start staying in some of these business parking lots like Cracker Barrel, Walmart, uh -huh. and stuff, and they leave the lights on. Right. So the, I mean that's a complete blackout. Oh yeah. It's right. So nice and dark in there. And then nice. for the other side, I just have a a pillowcase that I poke two holes in and. <laughs> hanging up with a couple of uh, command hooks. So I love this um, for somebody, again, that's just, that's living out of the trail. This is not overly cluttered. This is a bed. Now the TV, yeah, sometimes I pick on the, the large screen TVs. If I was living <laughs> in my trailer, I absolutely, yeah. I'm using a, a laptop or something. Mm, like yeah, so I have away. a laptop also, but enough to like play games on stuff. I like to watch my shows. I see you added some DC connections and you're running your, you have that, phoenix inverter that's running through your trailer so you have some ac capability as well right and then that that shelf over there i had to reinforce the bottom because it's not very well made right and so i actually that's my uh pantry for all my dry storage now you're doing some cold weather camping i see you did the essential uh digital thermostat upgrade right. that's yeah. night and day oh, different so much nicer very very nice um now as far as a full timer on the road you have some special electrical requirements that the average uh, weekend camper does not. So yeah, definitely you take uh, us through the, the electrical system. So basically the whole entire battery system, I wanted something that was going to be strong, have a whole boatload of power. And it was just a set it and forget it type of situation. Just because this, this milk crate right here, it doesn't ever come off. It's strapped down in place and it's I, had a I have no reason to, with that same mesh yeah. on mine for like 10,000 yeah. miles no <laughs> reason to take it off because you can't beat the, the price <laughs> the, I, I wired everything in there good and it's it's solid and then I also put an outlet right there for my inverter on the side so I can easily plug in outside to like my laptop so or something this looks like a car lawn box just a normal outdoor duty box mm -hmm. but you have redundancy 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 so you have solar charging off the roof it looks like it's tiltable Yep. To some degree. Yeah, it tilts forward and back. All right. Yeah. And then you have a uh, large capacity battery that I want to take a peek out in mm -hmm. a second. And then an inverter generator. I'm impressed that you've been able to ride this on the road and not roach this. I yeah, assume so far, you've been I mean, through have, some rain. It, I've gone through rain and it's, I mean, it's still solid for now. I mean, we'll see how long it lasts, but it seems to be doing all right. We're not recommending that. Probably not this, the best idea. But um, <laughs> maybe a bag or something. It's around a good it. testament that this champion <laughs> inverter generator has been through a couple yeah. dozen rainstorms. Definitely a few and, of them. On, yeah. Uh, some with driving rain. So I'm sorry to inconvenience you, but I know the viewers are going to want to see what's inside yeah, 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 the diamond you. plate box. Oh, and then also, so the, uh, the generator. So the. The adapter that comes with the generator is this thing to run it off propane, but this sucker is not long enough to reach the generator when it's on the ground. Okay. So what I had to do is I put bought a regular Y valve from Tractor Supply, and then you know of course did that, and then got a high pressure hose and put another one of these on there, and so now it's just bungee corded right there, and I can easily just put the generator on the ground anywhere in this general area, so and I don't and, have to move my propane. And tank. to help people out that. What I'm seeing is that, so you got tank pressure, mm -hmm. you went through your Y valve, you have regulation here, right. and this goes back to the back end of the trail, regulates the furnace and uh, the stove, the, stove, the right. camp stove. But now this one is hot tank pressure, Still no regulated. Pressure, yeah. So you're picking up your regulation with from the, the one, from that, the one came that came with, with the, the generator. Champion. Yeah. So very, very smart. Mm -hmm. You can't run to no, it's regulators yeah, you're that's going to kill yeah, you. Yeah. So very cool mm -hmm. system, and everything's outdoors. It's not like you're running high pressure through the camp. <laughs> right, or, exactly. Um, I, I like the experience here, and I like the direction you're going. So I keep pointing at the box. Yeah, Let's yeah, see let me, the let goods. Me get around the pole. <laughs> All right, so here's my whole battery electronics setup in here. Got the 200 amp hour lithium. Got a Victron shunt over on the side there. And then everything comes over into this power distribution block. Sure. And then I got the uh, solar controller. So my solar comes down, goes into here. And then I got the inverter, which goes again in into the uh, my outlet right here. So the folks, this is top of the line. So you have uh, a very well-made battery, but it's absent a lot of the BMS controls for low temperature and stuff. But you're picking that up. You have the Victron Smart Shunt. Mm -hmm. You have a Victron Blue Smart MPPT. 
You have the Phoenix inverter, and I can't see this. I'm assuming it's Blue Sea. No, it's just some random, okay. uh, random <laughs> thing. But it, 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 I mean, it's solid. I wanted something that was, you know, looked it was pretty beefy on the metals that were going through so it. You so you have no connection to your tow vehicle as far as charge. Correct. You have uh, really top of the line uh, solar charging, a very low consumption inverter. There's like no standby consumption. So I actually, I so I use it. I don't, right now it's the the switch is labeled for. I think it's on. Right now the switch is in eco mode, but since I have the app, I actually have it just turned off. So I can turn it on or off in the app as, so it's not even using the standby the voltage Vitron to begin Connect with. The Vitron Connect app is, I use it as well. It's the best so nice. in the business. The way that everything that's blue and blinky links together <laughs> is really nice. And now you've picked up protection from the charging implements. So you have cold temperature thermostats. Right. That's, yeah, so I got the, uh, the, the temperature sensor that goes I, over to the shunt. So the shunt will turn this charge off so you don't have to worry about lithium plating or anything mm -hmm. like that. And then you don't have to buy an SOK or a Battleborn for five times the price right. of this. So. And then so it, as far as mounting the battery, because this is just a you know aluminum box, mm -hmm. I, they, uh, you can't see it from the top, but on the, under the bottom, I welded a piece of angle iron to the frame of the trailer and Made then bolted, own. that's what the ratchet strap is bolted to. And this to. is a Victron ratchet strap. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's, I got it bolted in there and, and then it's it doesn't move at all, it's it's solid. All right, so before I bore the people that don't know stuff about this, I mean, for me, this is eye candy, I love this <laughs> stuff. But essentially, with one small solar panel, you live full-time off-grid with AC and DC capabilities mm -hmm. and the typical low end of your SOC or state of charge mm -hmm. is what? 80, 85 percent. Which if it, in the yeah. winter time when I was using the heater and it was also the sun was going down earlier, so I was putting the lights on sooner. Yeah. I think I got to like 75 maybe, but exactly. that was that and was you were an potentially exception. even limiting your charge times if your shunt was turning off the charge. Right, it's if possible. If you were below yeah. three, so and you're still not even getting to a depth of 50 percent. Right, and I mean with this, I can with the lithium, I can go down to basically zero. I got I got set to stop at 10 percent probably. I think I said it like three, but oh okay, well. <laughs> <Still>. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Living full time, you are finding a place to to shower. You're going to truck stops. Yep. You're originally from the West Coast. We're right now. We're on the East Coast. Yep. So you're you're putting some miles in. Mm -hmm. Any yep. problems? Anything? I mean, I've done all I've done all the mods that everybody else has mentioned as far as uh, you know sealing up for weather and whatnot. And even before some of those people mentioned those, I was you know I had the trailer in my garage and I was crawling around. I'm like, that's not supposed to be there. So you. Know, Get some spray sealant or some caulking in there, and you know, just, just blocking, fix blocking, it right up. Just keep the water outside. Yeah. Um, and I noticed one more. It looks like you put a new set of shoes on your bushwhacker. Yeah. So now the spare tire is the same size as the other two tires. Okay. So you match your spare, and you no need if you're on the road for giant knobs. Right. And um, so this, but this one also, these ones, they lowered it a little bit, so it fits in garages easier with all the extra crap on top. Okay. And also their trailer tires are designed for this. So they get slightly better efficiency. You just they, roll, gotta, they roll better. You just got to keep them down <laughs> under 65, right? <laughs> yeah. So it says, says they're, they're ST rated. It's supposed to be 65, but I usually travel around 63 anyway. Nice. So it works out pretty good. Very good. Well, it was really nice meeting you. I appreciate you taking the time to do <laughs> this. And uh, I hope to cross paths with you on the road again sometime. Yep. <laughs> Hi, I'm Rob from Durham, New Hampshire. I have a 2022 Braxton Creek Bushwhacker 10 HD. So I'm down here at the Southeast Bushwhacker Boil. I drove caravan down with Brian Smith. We met up in Pennsylvania and did a two day trip down. And for the first time ever in my life, I camped in a Cracker Barrel parking lot. I didn't know that was a thing, Brian did. It was interesting, but it worked, it was good. But now I'm real excited to do Rob's tour of his Bushwhacker. He's got this thing pretty hooked up. Let's start with the galley. Sure. So I'm not much for like, I'm not someone to rip out the kitchen and rebuild it. That's, that's not me, but I did do a few simple things, you know, instead of the cooler, I just put in some drawers for storage. I preferred to have storage. I keep my refrigerator outside the camper. Um, this was something I saw on the Facebook group and I copied them and a cutting board that's just glued to the top. So it goes to the edge and stuffs things in here, like, a, you know, whatever random stuff. 
the shelf, also from the Facebook groups, are other people do it. This is just a like $6 shelving from Home Depot or something. Um, other than that, I mean, nothing too exciting. Just a shower rod tension bar up here to hold in these random little cups that came out of toolboxes. Yeah, so that's like uh, a rigid or uh, yep. toolbox from Home Depot or something. You're just taking the trays. I see you got plenty of power. We're uh, we're off the beaten path here. Definitely no electric pedestals. So you're working with some solar. Yeah, uh, there's a 200 watt panel on the roof that's not pulling in much. Um, so for the first time ever, I didn't have enough. I ran low on power, but that's why we have the PPSs, right? So. 100 watts down here to try to supplement charging up the PPS is a 50 watt one here hanging off the side. Oh, nice. So we've got, you know, we're off the grid for a few days, but we've had plenty of power. Yeah, yeah. Hasn't been a problem. So I see you have a little bit of a faucet mod. So that's part of uh, when we swing around on the other side, we'll see the, um, it's part of the Julka system. I bought into their ecosystem. And um, so when I want to do dishes or clean dishes, I should say, using hot water to clean dishes i don't think i need to explain why that's a little better than cold water but so i just wired in here so it'll drain out through the to the gray water bucket nice so i see you do have your refrigerator outside it's a bouge rv yeah that's the it's 37 not, liter. yeah the 37 liter yeah, like throw it up on here so because it's always outside it gets wet so i don't want rivers running into it so so that can off run there. off of the camper's battery but it can also run off your power station exactly yep so the reason why I like keeping the fridge outside as opposed to building it, something inside, which a lot of people do, and is great because you don't have to lug it around. It's just always there. But I use mine in a lot of other places too. I didn't want to buy multiple fridges. Like I use it at home sometimes. I take it to the beach. It's got a, a battery pack in it that'll power it for four or five hours so I can bring it out to the beach or to parties or, you know, block parties, things like that. So I like having the flexibility to wheel it around. And that's why I happen to keep it outside versus building one in there. Now, one of the things I noticed is you did a really good job with the accessorizing storage. So you bolted on the Harbor Freight boxes to the back for some for some small storage. Carry little bits and bobs. This is the Julka system, the hot yeah. tap eater. Yep, yep. So, you know, the same ladder that everyone else uses. I, I copied that and just uh, it's on a, on a bracket inside the case to... Nice. You know, keep so some of the knobs and to stuff. the ladder. The ladder comes down to the fender, and then above us, you have an Iron Man with yeah. the end cap. Have you ever seen one of these before? <laughs> <laughs> this is the first one, first time. <laughs> but uh, there's a reason why everyone has them. They're nice. Yeah, it does the job well. I mean, I have the room too, but I never, almost never use it. I prefer just sitting outside, even if it's raining. But I do sometimes put up the wall just to give a little, you know. I love this end wall that gives you a lot more space and it gives you a spot like you're doing, just a to tuck bit. a table in. We had some uh, pretty intense rain last night. It was coming down pretty good for a while, wasn't so it? So the awning uh, held up pretty well. Yeah. Now you have some custom graphics. <laughs> custom, yeah. Custom from Amazon. <laughs> you know, I just try to get a little trees on there. That's the one bushwhacker sign I left on. Jeff Bezos uh, painted those himself. Yeah. Well, obviously, right? <laughs> I I'm all about quality. I know what that is. Yeah, How do you yep. like the jackie up? Works great. I mean, once I got a pickup truck, I mean, being able to flip the tailgate down is, is nice. So, so you're able to take the... Now, yours has some fitment issues. We've been banging it in and out. Uh, we I might mean, have to grind it I out a little while. I take an angle grinder to it and shave yeah. a little off or something. Yeah. Nice. Now, this is your battery box? Yep. It's So, I'll apologize now. It's pretty messy. I haven't really cleaned this up, but... I mean, I keep, you know, blocks in here, but... The battery, the solar charger. All right. Yeah, you got to disconnect. You have a 100 amp hour AGM? Yes. Yep. Well, Renegies. this is another testament to what we've been telling people. Your whole setup, minus the power stations, the panels on the roof, I mean, it, you charge in any weather. We live in the Northeast. Yep. And uh, this trip, which was extremely demanding, 100 degrees and the fridge was screaming, <laughs> and we just started to get to the low end of power after a few days. I did, yep. So that's why I had the PPS. About four days, like, right? Four days. Oh, maybe even five. I that's, you're getting into big math now, Brian. That's, <laughs> uh, that's a bit much We for forgot me. how many days we've been here, but we did stay at a Cracker Barrel and used our solar uh, to power the fridges. Oh, this is something you'll like. Well, on either side of the tongue box, wired in a... Um, a cigarette socket to plug. So that's usually when I plug, depending on which side I have my fridge on, that's the refrigerator one here. Very nice. I plug it on either side, but following some of your videos on DIY outdoor life, I put an Anderson power port plug in here. Very nice. To run the camper off the off the portable power station. If I want to power the whole camper. Yeah, so we didn't even have to get into that. We yeah. were just powering 
off the stock battery that's right. solar. Now that's your dual ca extension for the shower? Yeah, so I had the kick-ass shower awning, which a lot of people have, um, but Julka came out with their version, and I'm kind of a, I like their stuff. So I bought their awning, because, you know, the walls go up all the way. You can adjust how high it is off the ground. I, I don't need to go into the details comparing the two, but. So, yeah, this is the awning. I just run the hoses because the heater's on the other side over the roof. And uh, now I can testify, uh, you've been able to take a hot shower every day, and you're drawing your water out of the French Broad River. Right, so I wouldn't say I'm taking <laughs> hot showers, maybe like cool to lukewarm, because who wants a hot shower when it's under degrees, but it's yeah. a good way to, you know, rinse off. So you don't have to draw water from your reservoir. There's a pump and you just kick that hose out to the a water source and it can pull through. I either pull from a water source or I just have a jug I pull from. Um, I haven't bothered hooking up yet to pull from the tank because I kind of don't, I actually don't really use the tank on board. Nice. But, yeah, the shower head. Well, and we're making the poor guy take apart his stuff. But yeah, nice shower head. And it looks pretty sturdy for something that just kind of extends out over the end. I, I like it. Yeah, I like the nice, these, they kind of lock and click into place um, so they don't flop around. It's got a cover that can go over the top so you can shower in the rain without getting rainwater on yeah, your it's Something you like that's nice. I mean, I brought nothing for this setup. And even just changing like your pants when it's raining out in a teardrop, it's nice. We do have, well, not anymore, but we did have some neighbors. We did. We did. And yeah. uh, to give yourself a little privacy awning there is nice. Yeah. So you've done a lot of these videos on the channel. Um, I bet no one knows what it looks like inside a 10 HD. First time for everyone. Yeah. But I see mods. You want with blue lights? Yeah, so they're dimmable and then they can switch to blue because the you know the factory ones are way too bright. Got the Lux Pro system, but there's something a little different. We got a Renogy battery monitor, so you can check inside. I see your battery is just a little lower than it should be. It is a little <laughs> low. So swap this to a dimmer switch and we'll put some orange tape over it to I mean, this is uh, another one I got from the Facebook group, just a piece of wood with some rare earth magnets on the back. Clip it on the fender anyway. It's just a great way to add some extra shelving. Um, you know, I stick it on either side in any orientation, and it's yeah. handy. Little things like that change the whole setup. So yeah. this is like a command strip. Exactly. Those things, it's amazing what they can survive. You know, all the time on the road and mud and snow, rain, they stay on there, so... So camping with you for a few days, I've been impressed with some of this uh, setups here. Show me this little light that this amber, yeah. this illuminates the whole campsite. Yeah, so it's, um, to get it I don't remember time. if it was Facebook or wherever, but one of those suggested ads came up and I'm like, ooh, that looks neat. So it's called a Light Ranger uh, and it's a telescoping thing with a large light on the top that pops off. It has a large battery in it. This thing lasts a while. And then they, you know, there's various color lenses you can put on. There's a red one, an amber one. I, I keep the orange one or the amber one on because the white is just way too bright. This thing puts out a lot of light, but there's LED panels on each side. So depending on when you click it, you, you know, you get either all four panels or two or one. So well, the thing's pretty slick, and it folds down like a mic stand or something to a real small package. But I was I was pretty into it. We're we're next to each other, and it kind of lit up the whole campsite yeah. without bringing all the bugs in. Yeah. Now, you're using the jet boil system? Well, so it varies. You know, sometimes I'll boil water on the propane stove, but this is just from, you know, my motorcycle camping days. This is just so much more efficient and, and fast. So, I'll you know, I'll boil water with that to do pour over coffee. If I have plenty of power, if I'm on shore power, I'll just use the little coffee pot back there instead. Yeah, but I mean, in the pouring rain, neither of us can use our galley. So uh, it's <laughs> nice to have a little spot like this to be able to make coffee. You can never have exactly. too many of these. This is yeah. the Sterilite version, yep. but they're stackable. They're tough. Exactly. Essential. Just catch-alls, yeah. Yep. And now the igloo coolers, we're <laughs> using the water in the bushwhacker for a few things, but we don't drink it. Right, so I generally, if I bring this, because I knew it was going to be hot here, this is where I put, like, I'll just dump a bag of ice and five gallons of Poland spring water. This is my drinking water, coffee water, something like this. I'll fill up at the campsite. This is for rinsing stuff, washing hands, rinsing off your feet, whatever, you know. Well, so I yeah. use the water reservoir, I think, more than you. It's handy, but I don't drink it. So it's nice to have a little station like this for brushing your teeth. And... Well, I'd use it, but a hose snapped on the first day, so, you, you know. <laughs> We'll work on fixing that. <laughs> How do you like the little Goal Zero uh, Crush Light? Oh, yeah, I've had this thing for probably 10, 15 years. I mean, it works great. 
Yeah, it's just great for adding like a little, sometimes I'll just strap it up top in the, um, in the easy up and it just gives like a nice glow ambient light, not too bright, but just enough to see where you're going or to find your campsite when you're walking back from the party down the street, right? Especially when there's 20 bushwhackers here, it's tough to see which one's yours. Exactly, exactly. All right, well, I appreciate it. I wanna take a little peek at the tow vehicle and then we'll head sure. off. Oh, get to talk about the tow vehicle. So this is fairly new to me. I got this in November, so it's whatever, a few months old, but it's one of the new Frontiers, um, Nissan Frontiers. So I just, uh, it's a midsize, if, if well, anyone isn't familiar, but. Waterproof storage, well, uh, some boxes that not, you have. Not quite waterproof, but yeah, I like the retractable hard awning. Very nice. It's a well, load bearing. And uh, this Volt system by Pelican, you have a couple of these, don't you? No, just this one. Just this one, it's it's like just a rifle case or something, but uh, yeah, just extra dry storage, you know. How have you liked towing with the new Nissan? It's pretty good, especially if I'm trying to keep up with you on the highway. Uh, <laughs> it, it, does, it does well, yeah. Yeah, it can go 90. <laughs> yeah, no problem, no problems there. I don't think any midsize pickup would have a problem towing a bushwhacker. All right, well, we're having a good time. We'll wrap this one up. Uh, Rob and I have been hanging out for a few days. There's chances are we might end up in a Cracker Barrel again tonight. It could happen. Uh, we're yeah. we're going to hit the road, and uh, I will do a follow-up video all about cracker docking. because uh, <laughs> It's a good name. That might catch on. Yeah, it's something that most uh, teardrop folks should know about. But, Rob, thanks. It's been a blast. My pleasure, Brian. Thank you. And uh, we will see you guys on the Bushwhacker Facebook group. Hi. So I'm Barb Meyer, and this is my husband, Todd, and we're from State Center, Iowa. And this is a 2020 uh, FB. 10 FB. 10 FB. We bought it during COVID. Uh, we came back from Florida and found it online and went in the next day and bought it. Okay, so one of the first things we did was we changed the jack out to the jacky up so that we can remove this and we got more clearance, so we can go in with our driveway. We were hitting the driveway with the other one. So this is one of the first things we did, and then it also allows us to get the tailgate open and I'm things like that. I'm a huge fan, I, I do the same thing. Yeah, this was a recent, we just put this on this year to, for our extra storage, um, for all the stuff to set up with. Uh, it took a while for us to decide what to do, and this is kind of what we decided was the best thing for us. And we put our, mounted our tank over here, and then we have an 11 pound cylinder that we'll put here from time to time for backup or for like our little, we have a fire ring that sometimes we bring. So that works good for that. Great. One of the other things we did with the first, after the first year was we doubled up on the battery because my husband uses a CPAP and we need to have to depend on that. So we want to be able to run the fan and the CPAP for a number of days without worrying about things. That has become one of the biggest questions I get about DC power storage on the campers. Lots of folks are using CPAPs now. So yeah. you have two lead acid batteries and yeah. you can make it through the night? We can make it about four days um, running this and even the heater without an issue. Sometimes we'll hook up to the camper again with the truck just to get a little power if mm -hmm. we need to. Now we have solar panels, so it's not an issue. We just put them out whenever we can and we just will charge it back up. We want to be, while we like the air conditioning in the summer, we want to be, we don't want to be tied to a post. We want to be able to go and do what we want to do without having any restrictions at all. So that's Excellent. kind of one of the key things on what things that we do. Of course, we did some graphics um, on the on the side. Uh, we'll go inside in a little bit, but we'll do the outside first. So we did the compasses on both sides and split them. Uh, a few other little things here and there. We support the national park, so we got that one on there. Now this this awning is a uh, this is a Iron Man awning, and the funny thing is is we have the ARB awning on the other side and we used the tent over there, and then we bought this one second. We were out in Utah, um, uh, Idaho, horrible rainstorms and windstorms, and the arm on the ARB broke. So we took this one off, put it on that side, and we were able to use the ARB room on this awning, and we waited six to eight months for the new arm, arms for the other one. So th this one, I, I, I only got to use it once before we had to put it on the other side, but it's done just as well um, for a much less price than what is the IRB awning, or awning. I'm really happy with it. Now, I've actually met a few folks that have both. So it's been a really nice, uh, there's pros and cons to each one of yeah. them. Do you know the exact size on this? Oh, uh, it's like the, 
2,500 by 2,500, yeah. they do it in millimeters No, it's 2,000 by 2,000. 2,000 yeah. by 2,000. Yeah. Two, it's 2,500 by 2,000. Okay. Yeah, so it's like six by eight or six, six we'll and a half link, by eight. We'll link that exact one in the yeah. description if people want to see it, but it's really nice. It doesn't take up more than the profile width no. of the trailer. No, it's it's nice. It just It's just enough to cover it up. So then in the back, some of the modifications that we've done here is, of course, got rid of the cooler, and I'm a carpenter, so I built drawers that are just specific for everything we needed the tools in the top this I wanted for bags and, and that sort of thing and this had to fit a jar of peanut butter I noticed this right off the bat a lot of folks found something at Ikea or they found something that fit pretty right. well I noticed right away that this was custom to the space yep and I see the soft clothes yep soft clothes hinges, stays, full extension. stays closed nice when you're yep. on the road yeah yep is there they're, they're nice, nice. Uh, so that was one of the first things we did of course, I put this bar up here to keep things from falling off, and then I added these little closet rods because it still t tended to move, so it's those little things that you put a closet pole on. Sure, and it's t just the rod is tension, like yep, spring-loaded. Yeah, tension rod, and, but it was still moving on us, so we, I, I did that, and that has helped that from slipping down on me. Really nice yeah. Yeah. storage here, though, on the road. Uh, so another thing, so that, again, we need the lights down here, of course, they don't shine where you need them. So this is just something I bought that goes in the back of a car. Just a little strip of LED. Just LEDs, and I use just use black tape to kind of get it up there, yeah. and it just plugs into the cigarette lighter and, and it goes from there. Uh, we did move our water from up there. We don't oh. use the sink as a sink. This is our bread box. This is where nice. we put our bread. Bread box number one. Yep, and this is actually <laughs> not bread. This my daughter gave us. She this was is the ready. sink, no. <laughs> this is for all of our <laughs> containers. <laughs> And because I, I like all that stuff gets in the way, you know, it's always falling all over. And then I just took a regular cutting board and put a couple of pad things on the bottom of it to keep it. Very nice. Where it now needs to be. you brought the faucet down here. The water yep. pump switch stayed in the same spot. It's going to get moved. Yeah, yep. and we've talked about this a bunch of times on the channel. I had the same setup. I know why it's getting moved. It's yeah. just yeah. it's just it's, <laughs> every time. It's just a pain. <laughs> Did the knife the knife thing here? That's really nice for storage. That is um, nice. I like that. And then that. I use the, these as well for trash bags and, and stuff like that. So with the elimination of the sink or using the sink for bread, you're spraying into a container. Or we a have this little deal here. Foldable buckets. And it's yeah. two-sided sink. I love it. So Seattle Sports, and it's nice. we've had it for a long time. We've had one before that was like a different brand that was clear, yeah. and it cracked. This one's almost like a rubberized material, and it, we've had it for... No, probably five or six years and it's it's held up. Excellent. So that just sits here, we take our hose and we can fill, fill from there. Now under here we moved our hose for the vent, for the heater up to the top. And then we also made this little box smaller so we have more storage on, down here. Very nice. I'm a camper that always brings a dog along as well. I see a big part of your campsite is devoted to the pooch. It is, so they come with us part of the time, uh, whenever we can, as long as we can bring them. This is nice because they can get around without that leash getting st stuck on everything. I actually sit in here with them so they can sit on my lap and they yep. don't have to be there. Um, it's gotten a little sunny today, so we have another awning we'll be putting up to, to cover that with them. But the mats are nice to keep them out of the dirt and the mud so that they don't get full of, full of stuff as well. And this just folds up to about maybe two inches thick. So this was the awning room that you were talking about is this uh are these lights solar or you have them plugged in those are plugged in we have some different ones that are solar but these were not, are not quite as bright and so with the bugs we, we went with the the dimmer lights here nice so this is our map of the united states and since we bought this in 2020 these are all the states that this trailer has that we have slept in this trailer very and so, uh, very impressive and we'll, this one will be filled in next uh, in the next next two days so that's kentucky so we got one more to go in in that area the nice thing about the awning room too, is like with our dogs, we can create a little bit of a space for like when we're at a campground to kind of hide them from seeing everybody and barking. So that L shape kind of is nice for the dogs. We can keep them out of view of all the people walking by. Now with this ARB room, you have a floor? Yep, it says a full floor. Oh, and so another thing we do that people might be interested in is because our dog will push this open. So I put these little clips on here and then we use a carabiner that goes through these so that in the middle of the night, the dogs can't push that door open because they're nice. smart enough to get that. And these were just like key ring clips. And in here, so we have, this is the cot for the dogs. 
They, they love to lay on there and, and look out at us. So they, en they enjoy that. I do have four of these poles I've bought. They telescoping. It helps keep in the, bad, in the real bad rains. It has a little soft rubber top on it. And also that comes off and you can use it to, to put up the side flies as well. So these were not cheap, but they are nice. They definitely help the water peel off the yeah, sides it, it and not help. pool. And, and if it starts to stretch, the, yeah. the material of the roof, I've seen people cutting tennis balls and all different yeah, yeah, stuff, we but yours yeah. seems to hold up great. Yeah, it's been doing really good. We, we don't put it up too tall usually, you know, we kind of are careful with it. Now, you're like me with power. I see you're not brand specific. You have a Bluetti solar panel, but your power station was a... Is a Jackery. Is a Jackery. And I also have and Renology. you have a Renogy panel. Yep. And so this one has the, the charge controller on it and we use it to charge the batteries on the camper. So that one goes into the, the lead acid batteries on the camper. And, and this you, one is, we bought specifically to charge our jackery. So that has an eight millimeter barrel plug. So that goes into your jackery. Yes. Mm -hmm. Nice. Yep. So that's great for the CPAP as well. Also helps you get a couple portable items. Yeah, make you, sure we have it. Just do you in have case. a refrigerator? Yep, we have two actually. We only have one with us this time. We have the Bogue RV. The Bouge RV. Bouge RV. Yep. Um, it's in, in, it's oh, in the truck. The fridge right the now truck. it's on the Jackery in okay. the truck. Okay, perfect. Yeah, and we got plenty of sun today. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And we, all right, we'll go ahead and if we drive to the store, we'll we'll plug both of them in and recharge. Uh, in and the same way. And if I go to that there. coffee shop, I'll plug it in at the outlets when I'm in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It just takes a few minutes. And then inside, we we have not gone with the trifold mattress. Um, for a couple of reasons. We wanted to be able to stack these mattresses and make a, a couch. So we can stack them over onto this side or the other, the heaters on that side, so depending on if we need heat or not. So we can stack them here, and then we have two little, those flip down. Todd, can you go around this side? Um, and so then we can sit in here, and if the weather's bad, if it's rainy or stormy or whatever, and it's like a couch. And then we'll just put the pillows against whatever side that we stack the mattresses on. Yeah, let me just. And those are like little cup holders. I have those same ones. Yep, so that when we, like a lot of times we stack them here, so if we need to keep that heat open. And then there's actually just a little throw rug on the, now, underneath that. Being that you got the 10FB, how is your air conditioner done? Perfect, it's we not have no fine. problems. So yours worked from factory? From factory. Never had an issue. Never. Excellent. Yeah. Now I've, even just today, I've seen so many different designs. There's different ones from factory, different vents on the side. They, they were doing some trial and error, but some folks got a yeah. system that worked yeah, and they not, were lucky. <laughs> yeah, we no problem. We don't have any leakage. We have not we have not any real major issues with this. And at it all. gets cool. Yeah. Right, it, which is it was freezing last night. <laughs> oh, we geez. actually we actually air conditioned air both rooms. Room. Yes, room I've seen some people doing that. Now the air conditioning is so oversized to the spaces. Yeah. Sometimes it actually cycles better if you open the door. It doesn't short yeah. cycle. Yeah. So That's it, right. Yeah. That's yeah. Exactly so the point. dogs were happy out here last night for most of the night. They laid out here in the air conditioning. Oh. And we did. And the other thing I, I also did is like, we're trying to put like the, um, the, hit the, the, what do you call the? The piston, the piston. or the assist yeah. for the. We, we, we tried it, but I had bought the wrong one. So we started it. But the other thing I did was put a loop. Sure. So you can loop that up. And then what I do is I have my stick with yeah. some rubber on the bottom. And then we use all that storage. We did something similar. I actually have the similar curtain ring that you do in your galley here just to stick uh, oh, yeah. like a little broomstick <laughs> yeah, in to yeah. keep mine up. Yeah. Oh, that's but a good idea because sometimes it does slip down. Now, I heard you're saying you went, you didn't get like a milliard or a trifold. Are, is no. that the original teddy no. bear mattress? No. No, no so, this is a six inch memory foam and I bought it on Amazon and it was a, a, an extra long twin. And then I just took the, the teddy bear mattress, I put it on top of it and I drew a, drew a line and I used an electric knife and cut it down and then I altered the cover for it to fit it perfectly, you would never have told. Now that electric knife, if if somebody's unfamiliar with this, you can use like a carving knife, yep. the motorized carving knife with memory foam, and you could it shapes it. It's yeah. the easiest project it was in the, the world. I was a little scared, you know, because you, you know, <laughs> they, they're not expensive, but they're not cheap. Yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, what are we gonna do here? The, yeah. Another thing that we've gotten that I like are these these lights. They have these brackets up here, and and they also come with so this just magnetic, and they also come with like a Mm, tripod um, and then what you do is like on the back and then, so then you if you go like this it do dims it or makes it brighter and then it goes different colors what brand is that uh, I don't know hey, well, that's pretty handy 
I forgot my my daughter got some similar ones for her house on Amazon, and I I told her that I wanted those for the camper. I'll, I'll look. I think I have the back the yeah, I'll, information I'll, for I'll, it. I'd love to see. I'll put a link in the description for that because I've never seen that, and that looks nice. Pretty thing is handy. that red keeps the, the bugs stay away. Yes, yeah. and it, it actually keeps your night vision too. Yeah, and so you when can, you walk and outside, you you don't just see all black at and night. And you can <laughs> you know motion that in any direction you want. You know once it, once it's on there. Yes. The other I guess the other thing we did in here is oh we we put the instead of the radio. We took the radio out and put in the uh, power indicator and uh, cigarette lighter plug. USBs, USB. a voltage test, yep. uh, two, two 12 volt plugs. Very nice. Yeah, yeah. So the other thing that we did was this cabinet, middle cabinet door that always hit us in the head when we were trying to get anything out of it. It was shut. So we just reversed the hinges on it and put them on the side. Okay, so it did swing up. It did swing up. And now it swings so, laterally. Yeah, yeah. And then we, of course, removed the knobs from these. Yeah, and, and put just put a hole the in it. Pillow catchers. Yeah, so did that, and did you make this? Yep, I made these. I originally had curtains went all the way across. You can see the curtain rod. Well, that was a real pain getting in and out. So then we decided we wanted something different. So on these, it's just Velcro on yeah. sticky Velcro, and I sewed it to the curtains. So that you can either take them completely off, oh, or you I love can just it. fold them up like that. Oh, I was going to show you the. So we, how we modified the, how we got this to work. So what we did is we didn't cut this at all because we don't know, we didn't know if we wanted to put this in a different location. So we didn't want to cut at this thing. So what I did is there's Velcro on the camper in, in key locations here and here. And I sewed it to, then I sewed the Velcro to the actual tent. I would mark, I marked it where there's Velcro here, all the way across here. And then over here, so that when you know this then can come to, come off, and then this just unzips, and then you can just zip it right up. Very nice. So what we're talking about is these awning rooms are really nice, and what I've seen a lot of teardrop owners do is do something to give a little bit better fitment. Obviously, they weren't made for this particular trailer, so. Some folks have cut them with hot knives and, and sewed them back together and they use magnets and trim and stuff. But this is a very simple, straightforward, uh, keep it simple. Uh, just some Velcro and almost no modifications right to the, to the yeah. tent room itself. The only thing you did is just sewed some Velcro on. Nice. That was it. So that was, that was our answer to that. And of course our dog knows how to get out of that spot. So we have to stack something in front of he it. You gotta block the dog out. Yeah. Well, I hope you guys are able to get a few more stickers for that uh, U.S. map and continue traveling. It was really nice seeing you guys. We're gonna spend the rest of the weekend Thanks, together. All right. And uh, now I think all of us gotta get a cold drink and get in the water. It's about 100 degrees. It's time. <laughs> Take care. Hi, I'm Andy Murphy. I've uh, got a uh, 2021 uh, 10 FD. I'm from Smithville, Tennessee. Travel around the country uh, as a photographer taking, doing landscape and wildlife photography. FB is perfect for me for that purpose. So the mods that I've made since I've uh, got the unit um, I added the uh, tractor supply uh, center uh, tongue box, which uh, and and a dual um, LP tank slid them forward a little bit. Yep, yep. It was actually less expensive to do a dual and try to come up with the amount for the uh, single. Not nice. of interesting. So now I see you have a really nice awning here. Yeah, it's the Napa awning, um, and uh, I just this is the first time I've actually had it out. I just put it on. I just went through a series of. Uh, new second round updates, and this is kind of the shakeout tour for those. Uh, I did that, and this is a, um, a veranda uh, mosquito net. I thought it was the right size. It's a little too big. Uh, it's kind of an experiment and a work in progress. Uh, so I'm going to try to pick up a small. It wasn't very expensive. I think it was like 30 bucks. Oh, wow. Um, so Much cheaper. Yeah. Now you have a really nice outdoor rug. Are these lights solar? Are they DC? These are solar. Yeah. So they just, uh, I've got the power supplies hanging up over there on the corner and it just charges. Uh, the rug from, uh, it's from Walmart. And there's the number one accessory. <laughs> His name's Henry. Hey, Henry. 
Yeah. So you have a pretty comfortable campsite here. You mind showing us inside? Yeah, come on in. So when I, I bought this actually used, the people that owned it only had it for about six months. Uh, they had had stuff like this on there, which is nice. I like it. It's blackout, folds up. I added the um, the netting here when I'm just doing quick runs. My idea for this was uh, was to keep it um, kind of you know uh, easy to set up and easy to uh, tear down when I'm traveling um, for photography. Oh, um, this had, uh, had two, had the storage. I took the storage out on that side, um, kept this one, cut it in half. So I've got doors now. Uh, so I got three panels to open up and store stuff underneath, put the carpet on. Um, this is a gaming chair actually, um, that I bought to put in. It's a floor gaming chair and it's nice cause you can kind of sit in, you know, when you just pull in, you can sit up in the chair is easy on the back. A little bit easier than just kind of sitting and crawling around on the bed all the time. I really like that. And and going solo here to have a place inside the camper. Oftentimes we talk about how we spend most of our time outdoors yep. in the bushwhackers for sleeping, but whether it's the AC, I mean it's well over ninety degrees and yep. out right now and um, or a rainy day, it is absolutely nice to have a little home office in here as well. Yep, I did replace the air conditioner. I put the Toshiba uh, in. Um, it fit a little bit better, and then I reworked uh, the inside of the cabinet um, to make it efficient and actually work. Now, we're uh, going to show some uh, shots of this. Now, anyone who's familiar with the 10FB model knows that they located this air conditioner in the center, and although it was convenient, it was very problematic. It didn't work very well. Uh, overly technical yeah. when you get into light. It's starved for air. Um, so what I'm really impressed with was some of the mods that you made to make that work. Yeah, and we can go around and uh, just sure take a thing. look at that if you want. So um, so this is one, the, the primary, uh, I probably the most important part of the mod that I did after I took ReflectX and basically built what is a hoven, an oven hood uh, in the cabinet behind the air conditioner to seal it off. I then took the the actual vents off, uh, which look like this. So this is, if, you, if you've got the Tenefe, you're familiar with this vent. Uh, it's very restricted. I mean, it, it when you take it off and look at it, it only has an opening about that big inside the, in the vent. So these air conditioners are designed to breathe. They were engineered to hang outside a window. So when you box it into a cabin, like that it yep. it really needs uh airflow from multiple different right. ways you know it, it's cycling air through the back end of it and then there's interior air exchange so we've seen a ton of these mods but this is different than some of the other ac mods that i've seen yep. do you have any uh dc powered fans for circulation no so i put an ac fan uh two ac fans that are waterproof um in the uh in the unit so it was very easy i just put a furring strip in uh, across the uh, box and then screwed them in and pointed them up. So what is unique about this, and I really like it, is you are forcing the hot air up, which is always easier. A lot of times we had to force it down. Yep. And when we say an AC fan, that actually doesn't matter because if you're running air conditioning, you have access right. to alternating yep. current. Yep. And this, so what I did was I took the vent off, laid it on a piece of marine plastic, traced it out, cut it with a jigsaw, and then uh, took a hole saw, lined it up so that the holes that are actually already cut uh, in the trailer, lined it up with that, drilled them through, and then just mounted these. Basically, these are sewer um, fittings for the for campers. Yep, very common yep. component. A lot of times people use them for climate control, uh, the climate right, and the zero breeze. Yep. Way to they they're in addition to sewer outlets, they're used for a lot. Now I see you have a tiltable two hundred watt panel. Yep. So you're getting a lot of solar in here. Um, but underneath that, I see you have Reflex Tech on both sides of the camper. This is very, very smart. You want this camper to stay cooler, uh, add some reflection, refraction, and a little bit of R value. And yeah, it was an afterthought. I, I had to buy the Reflect X for the uh, the uh, air conditioning mod. Uh, so I had a roll of it. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna cut it and see if it helps. And it's not something that you, you know, it's it's interesting because I cut it so it's in two pieces. So I pull it up, just roll it up and throw it in the camper. 
downside though is if you get moisture on it, you definitely want to get the moisture off because you'll end up with a wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, you got to put it on a towel or yeah. a bag or something. But, uh, but that's like any canopy you're yeah. owning or tent that yeah, we've ever dealt yeah. with camping. So, but when but when you're in, you know, don't use it. You don't need it all the time. But just when you're in the hottest part of the summer, I would say it probably. <laughs> and I've got just enough sunlight at at, at noon here that it helps. Uh, you can. In the middle of you know day, you can just write, you put your hand under there, and it's not hot at all. And I'd say it probably buys me a couple of degrees. Now I have to say this because not everyone who watches the channel is into the bushwhackers or, or interested in buying them. A lot of times I get somebody asking why anybody would buy a camper that they have to do all of these things to. You, this is an inexpensive rig. There's nothing priced close to this. You bought your second hand. So with all of your investments in this, I have to assume you're half the price of a new camp tag. Oh, I'm less than that. Less than that. <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, it's it's amazing. It, it, you know, there's probably not, the most expensive thing probably that I've done is the air conditioner replacement. Yeah, so we tinker, and these, these FBs, they're not even, you can't even buy them anymore. They don't make them yeah. anymore. And I think part of the reason why was folks really wanted to use that air conditioner and it never worked. Uh, you have a really sound solution to this, and I, I talked to you last night. You're not done yet. You want to keep tinkering, yeah. uh, doing a little engineering yeah. on this. It's really nice to have a discount trailer that has a furnace and air conditioning. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. And some more uh, insulation. And you'll see here I've got uh, this is a little um, MIMO antenna. for. I've got a, <laughs> a PEP wave uh, router in the uh, cabinet inside. And so one of the things I did do was I set up the... Um, the TV came came in it. I actually wired the TV to the stereo, so I've got TV in the stereo when I'm in there. And then the PEP Wave router, uh, I use with an iPad, and I can watch TV, movies, you know, YouTube Excellent. TV. So, uh, how did you did you do any work on your galley? You want to show us the yeah, galley? No, nothing to the galley yet. The galley's coming. Oh uh, well, so, you're being you're being modest. I see mods already. So you so, got you went with the cutout for the Bouge RV. Yeah, but I haven't done the. Uh, the drawer yet i see you yeah you've left this bottom piece in which a lot of people tear that yeah it's away. just it just for the moment uh i'm trying still what i decided to do is wait and use the trailer a little bit more uh so that when i do the galley update it's based on what i really need not what i think i need it's a very smart yep. way to go and you know like you said we're we're camping it's very hot so i understand the ac mods but you a lot of us have done this. You have the Durafoss inlet with a ball valve. Yep. Um, every time I show this, people ask me to send them a link of the faucet. Braxton Creek included about three or four different connections yep. here, so it, it's hard to send a link that'll work for everyone. Um, is this like a jet boil? Uh, no, it's the Flame King. Similar, though. Yeah, and uh, that is what came in the unit. And then, like I said, just trying to keep everything you know low to the ground. I've just got a camp cook kit. You know, it takes up very little space. Now, you bought this second hand. Um, those are upgraded speakers. Yes. Yep, I upgraded the speakers oh, did inside the speaker. and, and out. Oh, nice. How did you, did you keep the same amp receiver? Yeah, I just, I felt like, you know, I'm not going to be sitting in the uh, woods rocking out. Oh. <laughs> you know, and if I'm going to do that, I'll use my headphones. So. so remember, I mean, we're talking a lot of modifications, and the price tag is low. Now it's always an uncomfortable question, but you're under eleven total, probably, right? Eleven thousand? Yeah. Yeah, probably. So I uh, probably haven't spent fifteen hundred on the uh, on the upgrade. Unbelievable. Yeah. So I mean, and that includes the lithium battery. The, actually, I'm sorry, we said that the lithium battery is probably the most expensive thing. Yeah, I've been yeah I'm very familiar with, with the money I spend on those each year. But and I'm very happy with the lithium battery, the controller, and uh, it. I have not. I don't think I've ever been under eighty percent. Now, we'll come back to this uh, kick-ass shower room, but let's talk about that battery because you're doing it right. Now, you have a lithium battery in here, but you also um, upgraded yeah. the charging and have some... So, this is a little bit of a jerry-rig. I'm, I'm frying this out now, but if, while I come up with the actual um, storage, uh, I'm thinking about putting another battery. So, once I do that, once I make that decision, then... I'll do something a little cleaner on the setup. Well, so you have a 100 amp hour self-heating yep. Bouge RV. So yep. you've eliminated the cold temperature issues. You have enough solar to initiate that heating feature when you're in cold weather. I see you have a negative shun, so you have some battery monitoring. Yep. And you have the Bouge RV MPPT solar charge controller. So you have a pretty 
nice setup here. Now, do you have uh, any DC charging, anything from the tow vehicle yet? Uh, no, I've disconnected that. That's the route that is the fastest and easiest yeah. to eliminate it. And, and then truthfully, I just, so I can turn the solar cha panel off and on when I, you know, don't want to charge. But when I'm driving down the road, I just leave it on, let it charge, and I haven't had a problem. I have talked about this several times on the channel. I actually have uh, a video that was all about it, but you can eliminate your tow vehicle interaction, dodge any of the potential issues. And if you do have rooftop solar, it's often more charge yeah. than most of us were getting, especially uh, with these smaller alternator vehicles. You're pulling it with a JK, yeah. JKU. Nice. How do you like towing with the Jeep? It's pretty decent. I mean, I'm uh, on the trip up here from Tennessee. I think I did about 16 and a half miles to the gallon. I tow locally with the Jeep. I take the Tacoma for the long trips. Has it been a little gutless on the hills or not too bad? You know, I just drive, you know, when I get in, I'm not in a hurry, and I just drive. I let, I listen to the engine and let the engine tell me how fast to go. And, you know, it doesn't really matter. But Because the main thing for me is once I get to where I'm at, I set up and then I take off in the Jeep with my camera and I like the Jeep because I can go off road. I can stand on top of the Jeep, you know, when I'm taking pictures and, you know, stuff like that. That's so, great. Yeah. Now you want to take us through uh, this, these shower rooms get such good reviews or I use it as a changing room. and Yeah. Stuff. So that's, All right. so that, that's what I originally did. I was on my last trip. I kept, I've decided I'm not flexible enough to change clothes inside the, uh, uh, the camper. Stayed in some, uh, uh, you know, dispersed camping, and I stayed in a couple of RV parks because I needed air conditioning for the dog. So I bought this. It's a little interesting, though. I, I did, it, the opening is here, uh, so it's not like you can open the trailer and just pop out into uh, into it. It's truly meant to be a four-sided privacy team. Yeah, and so I, I don't know yet. I have well, the solution. some simple mods, yeah. well, that'll get figured out, but... Um, Teardrop lifestyle, you learn a lot. Yeah. Uh, putting your pants on <laughs> is something. Without flashing the yes. everybody. So we it, love camping out of these, yeah. uh, but you know the downside is, yeah, sometimes you have to invest a little bit in solutions that you wouldn't necessarily have to do if you uh, had one. Of, yeah. Well, I think the other thing was is that I'm really interested in doing the hot water mod, um, and you're going to see that probably on Sam's place today. But uh, the hot water mod is actually a pretty interesting mod. And, you know, with that, then I've got my shower yep. uh, ready to go. So that's that's pretty good. The bushwhacker parked next to me. I uh, was taking a hot water shower today, yeah. you know, with the Pelican box on the side. Yeah. I think the thing that, you know, what, what I've found is try to think ahead, too. Don't just jump into doing your mods. Uh, you know, kind of space them out. Think ahead. Think about what you might be able to do later. You know, like I said, like with the shower, when I bought this, the idea was purely... I got a changing room, but if I want to add the hot water, then I've got a, you know, I've got a place to shower. Um, and I would say that about the same thing I'm going to do with the galley is I'm just trying to figure out how I'm going to use it. It's excellent advice. So now, uh, you know, meeting all these folks at these teardrop gatherings, I, I'm always interested in folks' stories. But to have somebody that's able to use their setup, they can tow it with a Jeep. They're out here to do photography and appreciate the outdoors. This is just a nice in this case, a cool place to go to sleep, yeah. but it could be a hot place. It's a warm place yeah. to go to sleep in the winter. If, if, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate the tour. Thank you for taking the time to hey, do it. I appreciate it. Hey, and if it, if you guys want to see my website for photography, uh, it's www.andersonmurphyphoto.com. I will get that link from you. I will put it in the description, but I'm really excited to see somebody out here adventure traveling to see what kind of photos you're coming up with. But thanks again. We'll see you guys next time. Thanks, man. Thanks. Hey, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today, I found a new friend that is sporting the 12SK. They're not super excited about being on camera, so I'm gonna give a go at giving a tour of their camper. I'm sure I'll miss a few things, but I'll do my best. So first, I'm really excited about this box. I've really liked these NOCO electrical boxes. Um, they are a little pricey, but it is a perfect fit for their setup. There's some knockouts here. They have a nice, uh, 
cutoff switch for the battery system. I see they have a 200 amp hour AGM and they're going with the Bougar V MPPT. So if you follow the wires up from the MPPT, um, I see a branch connector. They're using some Eternabond. This goes up to the SIGS panel and also that's a Bougar V product. So they're getting some good solar off of that to charge this battery up. We're off to a pretty good start. Now, the 12SK is two feet longer, so I'm gonna show you the interior. There's some extra storage in there. It has the same window air conditioner setup as all of the Bushwhackers. I like to see that the water's coming out. That lets me know that it's not running in. And this tells me that they took the time to make sure that the camper was tilted towards the water outlet on this AC. Something new for me is seeing a city water connect. This comes standard on the 12SK. So when you do have a campground set with uh, pressurized water, you can get that pressure to the tap without filling the reservoir up and relying on a water pump. Pretty cool feature. I see they have a filter here on this. Outside shower. This hot water heater has two options, an off-grid option to run on propane, but it also has an electric option, and that's not 220, it's 110 electric that heats that. Very cool, I see it vents here. It has the same Dometic, no, it's a suburban furnace, the same furnace as the new 10-foot bushwhackers uh, that's more than adequate to keep you nice and toasty in here. So swinging around the back, so the first thing I want to do on this bushwhacker is to see where the galley opens up and the 12 footers have eliminated the galley. The joke is that they couldn't figure out how to get it to stop leaking, so they did away with it altogether. But what they did include that I'm really excited about is a really nice pull out kitchen. The 12 SK comes with this really nice slide out kitchen. Um, so an outdoor kitchen is what most of our tiny camper folks like to use. I really like how they went with this. It's very uh, strong, it has a nice supported leg. They got a flat top here that's made by Suburban that's like a black stone. And you have a kitchen uh, sink here that has hot water if your hot water heater is on. So I've seen some of the mods already that people are doing with this. It's really exciting. Um, it's also cool to see on this setup, not a 270, but like a 180 awning and uh, real high quality. Now I'm gonna look for the brand on this. This is uh, Overland... Vehicle system. Overland Vehicle System. I'll look for a link on this, but this is just as nice and sturdy as any of the ones I'm seeing from Iron Man or almost like a 23 and zero. Now, one thing I need to mention is it appears just like with the other Bushwhacker, there's no black water tank, no, no gray water tank. So we have a bucket here that this drains into. Uh, that's important if you were on national park land, you can't let your water drain onto the ground. So moving along over here, my friend here has an ice maker. This did not come with the trailer, but uh, this is pretty cool when you have shore power hookups. No driving to town. If you're having drinks, there's ice on hand and it's one less trip that you have to make into town. There is AC power on the outside of the 12SK. You pressurize water that hooks up to the sink and a low flow propane port that'll run your cooktop. I'm also seeing some folks putting splitters on there and actually using that low flow for multiple devices outside. So coming from a 10 foot bushwhacker, it does look pretty luxurious. Now I have to admit, I'm one of the people that thought the 10 foot was big enough. I like to put it in my garage. I like to maneuver in some off-grid situations, off-road situations, but uh, there is a lot more storage. It seems like they utilize the additional two feet to give you some really good places to store your clothes, store your box. There's two large base cabinets. My friend here is hooked up to electric, so the AC is running. Pretty nice job. So one of the mods here that I'm seeing that I really like is that if you go with a really deep mattress, just like with the 10 footer, you're gonna run into some of your vents and your ability to access uh, your cabinets. So we stayed with the same size mattress, but underneath it looks like this one's made by Summit, but it's basically like the backpacker's thermal rest. So it does fill up with air. It gives some really nice cushion. And this here is a dog blanket. 
And we don't have a dog here. This dog blanket is here just for the things that we go through when we camp in small trailers. You're tracking in dirt to be able to knock it off. I really like this setup, uh, even though I'm reviewing it for somebody else. So one of the things I'm seeing on these uh, 12 SKs is that the refrigerator is on the side. This is not the Coleman Peltier cooler that used to come, those battery murdering machines that they were. This is a dorm style fridge that runs on 12 volts. I don't know the actual cubic feet of it. It's very, very small, but it, it's really convenient to have them including a 12 volt refrigerator. Um, the only add-on that I'm seeing that took some time on this one is this awning up top. Basically everything else we've seen is stock on this trailer. My friend picked up this camper down by Virginia Beach. They've been storing it up and down the East Coast, but it's really cool to see them down here in North Carolina on this camping trip. Uh, thank you for letting me review your trailer, and I will see you guys next time. Hi, I'm uh, Mark. Uh, this is my 2021 10FB and pulling with my 89 full-size blazer. All right, a uh, couple of things I've done. Obviously boxes, boxes and more boxes. Bulk storage here, tons of it. I wanted the biggest box I can fit. And this is really nice. Is this just a catch-all? Yeah, I, I mean, there's stuff that lives in there. The, are you uh, batteries in there? No, this is the only battery I got. All right. Oh, I didn't even see that. That's the only. So I had pretty uh, sweet system with the ratchet straps. Yeah, these are. this is where we store the coolers. They all sit, those sit right up here. Hook them right in and they're ready to go most of the time. So you did a master switch on your battery. Good job yeah. with that. I was already there when, you know, when you bought it, so. Nice, what's this little guy over here? Uh, fuel tank. Yeah, uh, just a couple gallons of gas. I just had to, just had the uh, fuel sender replaced, and just in case, I put that on Monday. That's <laughs> <laughs> smart. So you swung your propane over to the side? Yeah. But you yeah. got a new mount for it. It looks like a stainless. Yeah, I had a, I had a different one before that. It works well. I don't I don't need to, any tools to take it on and off. Nice. So uh, boxes and boxes is the name of the game on this one. I absolutely love this. So tell me about what you did here. What the the boxes? Yeah, those are, uh, I think they're buyers, made in USA. Um, they're under truck bed boxes, what they are for like work trucks, flat beds. So you found a section of the aluminum frame, studded them into it or? I ran screws and sealed them and then bolted it to the fender. So it well, what type of things do you store in that? Uh, on this side, tools, junk, um, a fan and stuff like that in there. Um, the other side, I keep my cast iron, a lot of my cooking stuff. Now I see, your, are those Rome's? Uh, those are condition ones. Those are made in Texas. All right. Um, they're, they're actually were rolling cases. They're gun like a rifle case, yeah. Yeah, so uh, I took the wheels off of them, hung them up there. I keep a... Uh, Clean, clean stuff on her side, dirty stuff on my side. I love that. The name of the game with these small campers is yeah. they're a nice place to go to sleep at night, but I mean, you're never, uh, you never have enough storage. I put a auxiliary high pressure line in. Uh, the low pressure is nice, but. So but that's not passing through a regulator. Correct. It gives you tank pressure back and then you'll regulate whatever you're using, like a grill or. A... Yeah, I like the, we got the traveler grill back there. It's regulated, so. So you, you have to have an unre unregulated line going to it. Nice. So I see you extended your water hose. Uh Oh, yeah. I just moved it over to the side. Yeah. It's, it's Having it in the middle is just awkward. Yeah. A lot of folks, uh, do you know what this is? That is a towel rack for a bathroom. There was already one on the passenger side when we bought it. The previous owner had it, and I just bought another one. They did eventually fade, so I had to repaint them, but... Since so they're not meant to be outside. This is a case of somebody who had done some mods, sold the trail, or you picked it up and just took it to the next level. Yeah. Nice. I, I'm loving this countertop. Tell me about your galley mods. Oh, I did everything backward. Move stuff over, move stuff over again, remounted the the vents. Um, quite a bit of storage in there. Um, and just bought that, hung it in there with the countertop. And this is a butcher block that you put a little walnut stain on, or uh, bought it. It's it's actually a tabletop, like you buy from Lowe's. Um, came in through the thrift store. I'm like, okay, cool. Bought it, cut it down. I'm not I'm not impressed with my fit and finish, but I started getting. If it works, it's good. 
Now, these are the same tiles that came with it, but it looks like you added some. Yeah, just clear, make it look a little more vintage. Those are available on Amazon, yeah. right? They're stick on. Yeah. Nice. So what am I seeing up here? Oh, that had netting there. Um, uh, same netting that's on the inside. The, the previous owner had it. I just don't use it. It was too cluttered for me. Whoa. I'm breaking this stuff, but at least it's snap-on, so it's yeah. going to keep working. Yeah, it's fine. Now, I am noticing a ton of snap-on stuff, so tell me what the deal is. Oh, I'm a, I'm a snap-on dealer. Snap-on dealer. Yeah. This man is responsible I for guy. most of my life savings. <laughs> I've gone to this company. But uh, they make the best in the business stuff, so... This is just a magnetic snap-on light? Yeah, just right, okay. hang whatever light there I want. Very cool. What about that faucet upgrade? Yeah, that's a second faucet. I had, I had the normal RV one that folded and folded and annoyed me, but I wanted something. I saw somebody else had got one, so I like the fact I can direct. So you direct just it. drilled it through, uh, made the connections of the fittings, and you're using the same pump. Yeah, just, yeah, but it has a valve to control speed. Oh, yeah, you can you can control it separately, yeah. It's sure. really nice. Very cool. All right, take me through your uh, second towel rack. Yeah, same same box. Usually keep like my cast iron, cook a lot of my cooking stuff in there, and then place put the coffee maker, hang it out here so when your your coffee drips go on the ground, not not inside. I love these towel rack ideas. And you said you just got to touch it up with paint because it's yeah. I I sprayed them out them last week because they started to fade. Uh, yeah, this is my 89 full-size blazer. Um, we've had it for 23 years. So you've had this for 23 years. It's in 1989. How many miles on this? I have no idea. It looks None. absolutely mint. And knowing that you work, have a, you know, a snap-on uh, franchise, I assume you have this thing tuned up and it's run like a top. I just spent a lot of money on it, yeah. <laughs> that's it. Well, that's how it goes. Now, for a car like this, I saw you were riding with a truck. I see you were riding with the top down so that you have a hard top that comes off. Yeah, yeah. Is it the original Blazer setup or something that you did? No, it's it's pretty much original. I mean, the, it's an original color. Um, but the top is painted to match, but it's it's it hasn't been on in years. It's like you sing my bathroom, and this yeah. thing is beautiful. Now, you almost made it here with the top off. You did hit rain. Yeah, and, of course, we didn't have the tunnel on, on so everything got wet. Like, we just set this thing up last week. And didn't think to put it on because, oh, it looks clear. No, it did, got rained on. Now, you, uh, for having big wheels, big tires, you said it, it rides pretty good, just keep it low and slow? Yeah, for the most part. I mean, it's 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 a little rough, but it's straight leaf springs, man. Did, <laughs> did you get lots of looks on the road? Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, um, now, you didn't just come from next door. Where are you coming from with this? Uh, town, uh, Washington, Missouri, about an hour west of St. Louis. So, oh. we're in... North Carolina, you went through five states. Yeah, five, yeah, five or six. Wow. Yeah. Definitely a trooper. I thank you so much for taking the time to hang out with us today. I'm sure people will appreciate uh, both your bushwhacker but your tow vehicle. So we'll see you guys next time. Right. Thanks. Thanks. Appreciate it. Richard Matthews, my wife Breon, and this is our 17-foot bushwhacker bunkhouse. We added a toolbox and put the, these were kayak <laughs> covers that go in there where you, you can take them off. So that gives you a for your battery, but you can also access it. All right, it gives you that. And if you want to, you can take some of this out and put a generator in there and run it if you want to to close it up. Oh, you could run a generator in here. So you got right. batteries in parallel. They said yeah. you have an Anderson disconnect, your propane's in there. Now, what do you have going on? I see your jacks removed the handles off. Yes, I took that off for some convenience so I could use uh, my impact to run it up and down. Well, so something you, similar to electrical, but it's not <laughs> electrical. So you uh, you welded a nut on there to be able to bite onto it, and you still have oh, the handle that you... Yes. Uh, 
welded the socket on. Or you still have the same thing. Can they still do the same thing if you run battery runs out? I love it. And I noticed that the nut is the same as your stabilizers, which are also ones. Uh, so absolutely. one less. Now, is that the same as your lug nuts? Same as my lug nuts. All right. <laughs> so yeah. then, you can use a full wig lug nut on it or whatever you got. Now, I've seen a lot of these Bushwhacker Pluses, these 17-footers. <laughs> I've never seen one with the side mount ARB, so that's something you did. Yes, I did. Uh, put a plate on the inside to brace it up, but actually the bottom, four bolts, two on each end, the bottom bolts are actually going through an aluminum stud that's in there. So these, just like the smaller bushwhackers, the, the inside of this is either a, it's an aluminum skin or a phylon skin with aluminum studs. Right. So you got into that. Now I know from the Bushwhacker Plus Facebook group to stay off the roof. The roof doesn't have the strain. Uh, I would not even attempt to get on the roof with anything, oh, quite right. honestly. So you got that good and secure and it keeps you out of the rain and shades yeah. you from the sun. Shades, sun and all it is. Nice job. It's a that. nice place to put, you, put your little lights and <laughs> and that stuff. Have you ever thought about those ARB rooms? We have an ARB room. We just don't use it very often. Well, when you have a camper, most of the folks camping here don't have a stand-up height or a place to walk inside. <laughs> exactly, so yeah. That's a that's an awfully nice fridge. Uh, how do you like your ice co? Oh, I wouldn't. Uh, that is the bomb right there. That uh, beats anything. Eliminates ninety percent of your ice usage. I mean, it's it's a refrigerator. It it's a yeah. Dan Foss Seacoff compressor, super efficient, and uh, right. we're not leaving camp to go be get bags of ice. Not not very. Uh, but this uh, what I love about it is it's, there's a compressor in it. I, it's a twelve volt, but it same it comes in a uh, a residential refrigerator nowadays. Yeah, they not the same thing. thing. And the only thing that's better about it is if it's it can tilt. Uh, it's mm -hmm. not going to get damaged if you're doing some off-roading, right. but um, that DC yeah. plug you added, yes? Yeah, I did. Uh, I did, I did. Well, like I say, if I want to run this off a 12 volt, if we're off grid, I can run this off a 12 volt, and also plug my string lights in the light. And it gives me a USB port out here with my voltage. I see your charging in your phone, and yeah. you can see your battery voltage. Smart. Yeah. Now, was that outside GFCI there, or Fifth did you have already that? here? Okay. I did extend uh, the propane quick disconnect. I extended it out where they let get other their support and added another one. So now I have two quick disconnects there. Nice. So as long as you keep an eye on it, it's not something, you're not taking this thing on uh, too rough. No, no, no. Storage black tank where you emptied it is only, I don't know, 12 inches off the ground, so, so you can't do much off-roading. You got to be careful. I'm glad that you said that. So opposed to our little 10-footers, this does have a black tank. This does have an internal bathroom, so it's not really something that you want to black be dumping tank, down. Great tank, but yes, you can. Uh, well, if you look right here, you can see how low that that is. So you're not really going to be doing no heavy-duty off-roading with it because it's, oh, it's so close bad. to the ground. All right, well, uh, something that'll be new for us 10-footers, uh, we want to see a tour of the inside where you can actually stand up. Sure, yes. That's a real plus for us. <laughs> this only came with the one step, so you were stepping out to right here, and then you had a big step, and we added the two steps, which really makes it convenient and nice. Nice. Was it bolt-on? Yes, it actually I forget, came from Amazon, but it was a direct bolt-on. I was surprised nice. when I got it. I didn't actually... Playing it, but it's so turned. You're have to fire up the welder for that. It turned up, it turned out really nice. Yeah. Inside this 17 footer, 17 BH, we have bunk beds on the end. Bunk We have a microwave, sink, air conditioner, which is uh, working really nice right now. You do yeah. have an AC refrigerator. No, this is like the 12 volt. That's a 12 volt. Does it? it D does it do propane or no? No, just strictly 12 volts, no propane, just 12 volts. It's just a straight 12 volt, like the ice go almost. But now you do have a bathroom that has a shower and a toilet. Now, this is what I was asking about last night, and I was wondering if Braxton Creek had fixed it. 
a lot of folks were having trouble with some delamination here, but it looks like yours is in we, great shape. Yeah, we hadn't had the problem yet, but I see, I know what you're talking about. I've seen a lot of people talk about so as they use it, they start, they have to re glue it and put it back up. Is this something that you've used much or not yet? No, we don't use it hardly at all. We most of the time we use the facilities at the campground. And it has an outside shower also. Now, I don't think it came with textured 111. What is this? <laughs> I put that on there to cover the bed up to help keep the cooling in here with the AC. We only use the AC. We very seldom ever. Oh, very nice. Uh, so you cut it well, it's side, and you could always remove it? Right. I did. Very easily remove it. So you're a shore power generator type of camper. You're not doing too much. <laughs> yeah, I, I am not a uh, roughy too much. <laughs> no, I, I, is, I'm enjoying the fact that I'm standing up inside a bushwhacker. I'm not used to that. So I see yeah. you have a little flat screen. Does this right. seating area turn into another bed? Yes, this turned into a queen size bed. Oh, so this would technically be like the master side. Mm -hmm. And then mm -hmm. this one over here is for the kids and the grandkids. Yeah, actually, that's where we sleep, but that's, that's <laughs> what it's made for. And if you look, I got a TV at the foot of that bed, too. Oh, no kidding. Yeah, same one as up here. Very nice. Now, how did you run your 12 volts to that? Well, see, those are actually LG smart TVs that they came from uh, Best Buy, I believe. So, they they are, so they're AC TVs. They, they are AC, but they're actually run off a 19 volt. DC. So I put a step up transformer on them. Yeah. So that they, was, they will run, well, this one will run off either AC or DC. That was strictly DC. So as long but, as you get your hot pin right and, and the shroud is neutral and you're off to uh, you're off to the race. So this ain't your first rodeo. Well, with it, electronics. if you wire them in directly, like I got to the 12 volt, you need an off on switch because even though the TV is off, it still draws. Voltage. I talk it about will. this a lot, and people don't understand phantom draw, parasitic draw. This little radio here yeah. is like, I put a switch on mine because it's the style that comes in cars. Even when you hit the off button, it doesn't. It, it just, still it, draws it, wattage if you put yeah. that. It appears to be off, but it actually is still going on in there. So this is really impressive. It's nice uh, to have a simple, affordable camper that has everything you need, nothing so yeah. fancy. But uh, the my favorite part of this whole thing is that you've had an excellent experience. A lot of folks have had a lot of trouble with this 17BH, and it seems like you've had either you got a good one or you just know how to keep well, up on it. And then, look, well, I come. My background is uh, industrial maintenance, so I kind of know some fixes about stuff and know what to look for, sort of. Like the AC, people have. Terrible, terrible problems with the AC because of the way they can't get enough air to them. Starving them. Yeah. Yep. And my two beds came down, they were three inch, I think, or two inches. Came down almost all the way to the top of the unit, which was about four inches. They didn't need it. After I cut them off flush with the roof, it started it just started working. Moving your flow, your yeah, feet, the air. more CPM. See and uh, the fix I see a lot of people doing it putting a whole different roof bed on. Yeah, I didn't, well, I hate, I hate to mess with that roof. <laughs> it's <laughs> only the best maintenance men know not to cut roofs. <laughs> <laughs> and a lot of people mount their TV to the wall and swing out. We don't, uh, ours, we just unplug it, lay it on the bed there, and it, it rides fine. That way I don't have, I don't like putting holes in the wall or anywhere I don't need to. Nice, now, do you do much cooking inside? or not very little, uh, uh, only if the, in clement weather. But other than that, strictly outside, and just because I enjoy it more. I enjoy it more, and the first time you try to Ooh. cook some fish or yeah. something, you're kidding. Oh, yeah, it's <laughs> like, yeah. <laughs> you don't want to no. make it. All right, well, we'll head back outside, but I, th this looks like a very comfortable, oh, it, uh, very purpose, you know, just what you need, and I, I'm I'm impressed. Look, thank you very much, yes. So as I was looking underneath your camper, I see the extension hitch. I know those are good for... Lowering your rear tailgate, they're good for uh, when you're backing up, it changes your ankles. But you're driving with a 2500, right? Exactly, yeah. So it doesn't doesn't affect the pulling ability or putting the weight on the truck or anything. There's quite a tongue weight capacity. Yeah, there's the truck. <laughs> now, you're wearing a Jeep shirt, though. You also riding a Jeep? Yes, we have, actually have two Jeeps. We've got a Jeep J Canyon and a Jeep TJ. And 
we do pull this with the JK quite often going to off-road park. You, so it's not a Ford or it's not a JKU at no, JK? It's just a JK. So you're able to pull your Bushwhacker Plus with the Jeep. You're not using that extension hitch with no, it. No, uh, just think, <laughs> but it did, I did have, it's got a two and a half inch lift on it. If you don't have a lift, you will you sell them out. Now you have stock uh, gear ratio on it? I still you, have the stock gear ratio. Is it manual? No, it's automatic. Nice. And it does uh, really well. So offhand, do you know what the total weight of that trailer is? Uh, right Average. Now, probably tell me what. I guess we know. We'll look it up and we'll put it on the yeah. screen. That's yeah. the beauty of editing. Yeah. But uh, I, I know it's got to be twice the weight of the Bushwhacker 10 foot. You kind of, sometimes you have to be the dry weight of it and then what you add to it, you have to be. You got to go to the you know, you know, Go to a weigh station if, and get yeah. the actual weight because you right. run by the time you start adding fridges and tongue boxes and stuff, yeah. you just throw the yeah, you, throw the number out there. And like I say, the, the JK does real good. It um, and we still get like ten, eleven miles a gallon on, on with the uh, JK. That's not much worse than I'm getting with my. Hey, look, uh, I was surprised it did that. Well, I really appreciate you taking this. All right, thank you. And uh, we will see you around. We got a lot more camping to do this weekend. <laughs>Hi, this is Mike and Marty. Uh, we're from Minnesota. We have a 2020 uh, 10 FP. Enjoy Welcome. seeing it. All right, so let's introduce you to our Bushwhacker. Uh, while it is perfect on its own in brand new condition, uh, we made some alterations along with everybody else. We'll just kind of start here with the front of the trailer. Uh, first thing we did, one of the first things we did is we put a power jack on it. It has a light on it so you can do it at night. Uh, this really helps with lifting it up. We also got a double tire on the bottom because yeah, the single will nice. not turn. And of course we bought it sand. after Mr. Smith, Brian, <laughs> told us about it. Pull it through grass, pull it through sand, whatever it is. Now this is a maxi tracks, right? This is a maxi tracks, correct. To the, to, right to the battery, it's battery. got a, uh, powers it up and down and it has, correct. Uh, it has a, little a light port so you can see. For a manual in the tongue box, we've got the little like, turning it. If you, don't, if you don't have power, you can hand crank it down or up, whichever you want to do. Nice. It's got a cool sound when you do it, too. Now, did the trailer come with the sun tee? Uh, it did. Oh, uh, good. I'm, <laughs> I'm impressed it rides down the road so, like that. So, <laughs> uh, it does not. I have it there in the sun, but yeah, I love sun tee. I uh, was brought up on the sun tee with my grandmother, so. Very nice. So, you have, uh, this is not standard, so. This is not standard. This is a Harbor Freight tongue box. Oh, that's uh, cool. I drilled in and I added vents to it because it did not come with vents. And just to make sure nothing got overheated, and if I ever do move the battery inside of it, sure. I've got venting. Right. It's always great to have this catch-all. We have limited space in the teardrops. Correct. It, so I've got a box of everything that we need. I've got a toolbox, old hammers. Now, what I really like about yours, because sometimes simple is key, is yours fits perfectly on the stock tray. Correct. Um, I know a lot of them. Uh, including what I'm using. We had to cut into things, make some pretty major mods. That actually tucked behind your propane tank and went in like a dream, left room for the battery. A little tight right here, but we are going to just simply move this about an inch forward so we can sure. get to it. Because it's just a little tight getting to the key. But other than that, it's beautiful. We also, uh, when we switched, had to buy a brand new vehicle, it did not have the uh, connection for... The seven pin towing. The seven pin so. towing on it. So. We had the seven pin put on, but we could not run a brake controller to it. So we bought the Kurt Echo or Echo Eco, whatever it is. Yep. We strapped it to here. And of course, every winter we bring it home because we're in Minnesota. We get it out of the weather. So we take it off, put new straps back on. That's really nice. So that wirelessly, it uses Bluetooth to communicate with your phone. It does. And it, it utilizes the trailer brakes when you're braking the tow vehicle without actually directly wiring to the tow vehicle. That's correct. Um, and you did a really good job here. The only complaint folks have is they fall apart and they lose that expensive part. So I see you strapped her down. Strapped her down and then just bought a, four, a three foot, four foot uh, extension here that runs right to the vehicle. Now, 
Mike and Marty are OGs. OGs They're famous yes. in the bushwhacker world. Um, <laughs> but we, you know, we know that it is the Taz Whacker. So you scraped off the bush and you added uh, some graphics. Where did you get the vinyl? We actually uh, talked to an old friend of mine whose wife has a cricket. Oh, so these are homemade these cricket These are homemade ones. cricket. And we to uh, to customize your trailer is half the fun. So this, there's no missing this. We have, uh, I don't know, what, 15 bushwhackers At here? At least 15 bushwhackers At least, this year, and yes. you're not going to confuse yours with anyone nope, else. Nope, nope. Some people either completely remove them, leave certain things on there. Uh, when we get around to the other side, I'll show you a little hack that we had as well. Nice. Thank you for your service. Absolutely. Thank you. So with the Taz and the Whacker, you know, we went through, we started pulling all the bush off of it and everything. Uh, but the other side, we actually picked the wrong letter, and I'll show you that in a minute. <laughs> nice. Latest thing we did here is we painted our silver steps with a black truck bed coating. Yeah, it's got some texture. It looks so it's looks not tough. slippery. It wasn't slippery before, but it, this now it's not slippery at all. It matches so, better. It's it, and it look. looks really nice. It kind of levels everything out. Uh, one of the other things we did is we added an extra uh, a port out here in the outside, so we have a sprayer out here, and we have the sink inside. So. I can't uh, understate how great of a modification this is. The bushwhackers come with this giant high pressure hose. It's great for cleaning off your feet and doing different things, but uh, it's a lot better suited out here than it is in here. In here, this is a mod you did with the shut off valve and one of these uh, Durafoss connections. Correct, and we were able to find, we had all pl plastic connectors, so we didn't have that problem that some were having with the metal connectors. Yeah, you know, the they're right all ones. different fitting, so they're it's hard fitting, to recommend so. them to people. Uh, this is probably th version three of our gallery, our galley. Mm -hmm. uh, my wife loves to change things around. It looks very Love you, clean. Honey. It looks very organized. <laughs> <laughs> the missus is laughing in the background. Um, I really like, so you painted, you gave yourself some extra space. This is a new countertop. You swapped really these. Swapped these, yes. So this is the actual original formation. No, from the first, well, from the first from one. From the very Correct. first Bushwhacker had the stove in the, the center, and For, you yes, must have liked that better. We like the fact that if we use a big pan, if we're, if we're gonna pull out a big skillet pan to cook for more than two people, it fits there. Over here, you're fighting with this wall. You're, you're, Good you're point. not getting to that burner. So with it in the center, you've got plenty of room across. I see updated speakers. We put in some new speakers because the other ones are just kind of crackling a little bit. So yeah, we replaced terrible. these. The ones on the inside are still good. They're not crackling, so we did that. The other that. thing you accomplish is you have an old enough one like I do that the water pump switch is here. And so when the stove so was there, you would, you would turn it on yes. every time. So, so nice. we didn't need to move it up here. We didn't need to move it anywhere because this was what was stopping it or turning it yeah. on automatically. So yeah, we were able to leave it Those there. Those are adhesive stick-on tiles? These are, yeah, they're, they're like jigsaw puzzle Great. Uh, pieces that you just fit together and they look like they're all one piece. And you found a stud for that towel rack? Correct, yes. Very nice. Found it right in, that's pretty sturdy. We have these actually Velcroed to the, uh, screwed into the base. So these won't go anywhere, holds all of our things. It looks really good and this stuff is so handy. I don't know, you found this on Amazon? Yes. Just little things to We hold actually your use those in our house. Yeah. We had them in our house before we brought them out to the trailer. I've also discovered things in the trailer that I've then brought to the house. You know, Definitely. usually it's the other way around. But And we've got our bushwhacker stickers up here. From this the first, is a very nice mod. Did the this first take annual? you long? Uh, <laughs> it took me like two weeks to get it straight. <laughs> and I just, you know, the fact that you were coming, I had to make sure it was right. So we've got the first initial bushwhacker up in Jenkins, Minnesota. We've got the first one down here. The second one up in, North, in uh, Jenkins, Minnesota, which we didn't have one this year. So, But we're oh, back down yeah. here and excited to getting show everything off. Getting some great miles on the trailer and getting some great use. Now, I love your outdoor kitchen. You went with the Blackstone? We absolutely went for the Blackstone. That was the simplest thing we wanted to go for. No, we're not cooking leaves this day. <laughs> so uh, we love the Blackstone. Last year, we cooked breakfast for everybody at this rally. Uh, made a I heart ate, pancake from Brian. Yes, so he, I think I have a photo that of that. Uh, but yeah, we love the Blackstone. We, we have tanks for it, but we're also looking to get the right price for a 10 pound one that we have a bag yeah. and a connector for. But for now, as much as we're cooking on it, that should be enough for us. Right. People rave about these. I've actually not really used them much, but uh, they seem to be a great camp stove. Whether it be Blackstone, whether it be a generic one, uh, just the flat top cooking. <laughs> yeah. 
you can pretty much do anything on this. You can cook pancakes, bacon, burgers, anything. You can make a cake on here if you needed to. Nice. All right, so what do you think about this 12-volt fridge? I see you have no fridge in the galley. No so fridge you, in the galley. You carry this in the tow vehicle? Uh, we carry this in the tow vehicle while we're driving. Uh, it is, of course, a 12-volt, so it has a plug into the vehicle. We've got two 12-volt plug-ins in the car. Or we can plug it in to 110 volts. So What's is, your quick review on the Calmera? We've had not a problem with it. If we need it colder, we put it down there. We've had it actually when we had power out at the house. We had to move everything in our freezer in here as much as we could, and we froze it. It's great. Excellent. So, but yeah, it holds a whole lot of stuff. We've got everything you can think of in here, and we've had no problems with it. Well, what cracks me up is that a lot of these fridges are made in the exact same place, and the components mm -hmm. are identical and everything about them. But yeah, you, they, yep. diff, they have different uh, reputations online, and I'm glad right. that you're having a good experience. Yep. We, with this we bought this first thing when we bought the trailer, too. So this, this is about three years old. That's true, and my wife likes this. This is another Amazon purchase. If you've never seen them before, and this saves a lot of space for camping, these are masonry Ziploc bags. They look like mason jars. Wow. But there's multiple sizes from the little small snack one up to a full gallon, I think. Yeah. And they don't leak. And they don't leak. Okay, they do not leak. They, they have squeeze. multiple seals. You can and lay you them flat on top of each other. You freeze this stuff at home and stick, yeah. And, or you can stand them up, whichever works for you in there. So What about this perfect. table? Did that come with it or is that an No, add we bought this, I think, we had different tables, but it's got storage underneath. Uh, and we recommend if you are outdoor camping, make sure you do not put anything that doesn't come in a tub in there. Because we just had an attack from a squirrel that came in here and started eating our popcorn. Um, so there's been multiple squirrel attacks at yes. the Bushwhacker Rally. Um, <laughs> one of them ate a closed bottle of Italian dressing and, and put oil all over the campsite. Absolutely, so. yeah. So that was our first attack from the squirrel, but she just threw a bag of popcorn in there, didn't think of it. It was wrapped and sealed. but. So yeah, this folds up, that comes up in it, and it's just a little briefcase. Nice. Sits well, flat is, right in the bushwhacker. This is a really cozy setup. Well, should we do the awning here? Yeah, I see you have the Iron Man. Yes, this is the Iron Man 4x4, 8x8. Uh, it comes with the room. We have that still in the vehicle. We didn't put it on because it's uh, hot and humid out. here, and we didn't want to create a little vortex of heat. So. But um, you, uh, you've had good experience. It keeps the rain off. We've it's had no problem. We, we angle one side off, depending on the, the grade of the ground. Uh, when it rained yesterday, all the water came off here, fell down there, and ran down into the river. Lights come on this one here. There's a strip of LED. Oh, very nice. We don't have them plugged in right now, but this gives you a lot of light under here. And it's so simple to put up. And we were talking about these little green squares. Like, OK, what are these for? Brain, brain fart. They're, used to help hold in the grooves so they don't fall out. Got they come it. sit in there and they sit right in there. Very cool. So now I mentioned about the uh, graphics here. If you take a look at this H here, look at the difference in the color of the two. My wife, instead of starting with the bush, with the H on bush, started with this H. <laughs> so we had our friends with the Taz. Oh, we got to show that first too. Did I notice booze in the galley? <laughs> So we had hacker. them take the image from our photo of our bushwhacker, put it through the computer into the into the cricket, and it gave the same look. I never would have noticed. Never would have noticed. Didn't. So as we enter this side of the gal, uh, inside of the trailer, uh, first thing we did in here is we put a TV out of that TV up there because we never use it, but it's there in case we ever need to. Sure. Uh, we've got the six-inch mallard. Mattress, trifold, and nice. we love it. Uh, I've never met a person that didn't love that mattress. For those of anybody else who's looking or questioning it, it is like a cloud. It is the best decision you ever make. Now you have a 10 FB, and I'm noticing it's nice and cool in here. So you did some work on that air conditioner. I did not. You did not. So All I did was, when you install your uh, window units at your home, you have them tilted out when you are running them at home out of your window. They don't have them level, they're, they're bent out. So all I did is I jacked the front of the cab up so it's leaning back, so the water but you all you didn't cut slides. any vents or anything? The vents, there's two vents on either side. And they plus, were there when you got it? Yes. Oh, so that's a mod, they- They made, may have bought they, it. They, yeah, but yeah, yeah, those, we've those had no problem with there. it. But my wife uh, has 
some sleeping problems where she can't lie flat at night. And for those of you that do, we found this little kit here. There's three, actually several pieces to it, but it helps her elevate. And then there's a pillow under her blankets that have her legs come up. So that she's pretty luxurious. taking the weight off of her, laying flat in any bed she can't do. Nice. So for those of you who cannot sleep on a flat mattress so you don't go camping. Go for the lazy go Z for the, or whatever. It's lazy, it yeah. It was just an Amazon buy and it comes, yeah. And even the hotels, we bring it into hotels. We, we, you know, at home we got a reclining one, but so that is exactly what we use for her to sleep well. So let me ask you, I've seen the pictures from your Facebook. Uh, do you know how many states, how many miles? You've been all over with the Tazwagger. <laughs> Well, let's start out with the maiden voyage. Uh, we've, again, married 28 years, but back in 2020, I'd promised her for our entire marriage to take her on this trip that I did as a kid with my parents across the United States. So she said for my 50th, sorry, hon, we're going, <laughs> we're going to drive that trip. So, okay, she goes, and I'm not tenting. So we sent out to get the right trailer, and we ended up with choosing the bushwhacker, and we took this on a maiden voyage of 7,000 miles, 17 days across the West. Multiple national parks, visited friends and family along the way, old co-workers, all the way to the coast of California and back. Parties. We have friends that have parties out at their, their lot. We go pull up wherever, the driveway, a backyard, the street, and we have our own bed. We don't put them out. Uh, I've, but I've I would talked to a lot of folks that use it when they go visit somebody's house. It's just it's now the extra spare bedroom. Yeah, I if you uh, estimate, I would say probably close to fifteen to twenty thousand. Wow, we've, very impressive in three years. We've, well, we've we got. Uh, it's always nice to talk to somebody who's used the trailer as much as you have. It's, it's been great hanging out with you a few times Absolutely. now on the Thank road. You. Thank you guys so much. We'll give a sneak peek. She doesn't want to be on the video. They can't hear you because you don't have a microphone, so we'll just wait. <laughs> All right, have a great weekend, guys. Take care. Hi, this is Chris and Crystal from Gatineau, Quebec, Canada. And we're here down at the Bushwhacker Boil, and we're enjoying ourselves with our 2022 10HD. from Canada we bought our bushwhacker you know we joined the group came down for the boil it's our first time highly recommend anybody from Canada coming on down bunch of great people it's a lot of fun we have a basic 810 HD bought it last year and we've done like a few minor mods like I said from Brian Smith's awesome videos and we've done you know the battery charger sorry the battery disconnect Couple of simple things. A couple of simple things. Hackers. Something like that. It's like a, we put an awning on, which is, you know. Show me this awning. So this was something that you got at Harbor Freight. Uh -huh. Harbor Freight. Uh, like I said, in Canada, it's called, like I said, the uh, Princess Auto kind of version of it. Rookies made the first mistake, didn't tie it down, and it actually blew off. And I we had to repair it. Part of the learning experience of owning an awning is you have to it is. it wind trashed at least great like i said for the spot we're at right now it's great just for a bit of sun well you did some repairs and it looks like it's in good shape keeps the sun off you and and it's it's good with it light, wind light rain. again we took off the rivets and we actually did some repairs ourselves and we actually put some good bolts with some bit of washers on nice. it and stuff like that now i see you did your own curtains i'm seeing you got a little uh yep little shoe rack it's great for that did you get this on amazon is that something you made just dollar store, store, dollar general type of thing. My wife made this custom quilt. She's into quilting and stuff like that, just to fit the exact same size. Nice. So different colors, a little make it our own type of thing. So you have power hookups. Are you uh, using that AC this week? Haven't. Whoa, impressive. Everybody was complaining about the heat down in North Carolina. We're actually finding it just perfect. The <laughs> vent works awesome. This is really good to hear. I have a no electric site, but these guys have electric hookups. They're still not using the AC. Yeah. Uh, you can get a lot of ventilation through the doors when you're running the fan on exhaust. 100%. Very cool. And it works great. Like I said, you know, 
And this is this just some different. It's blackout blind. So if you really want that darkness for sleeping, it works out perfect. But everybody's done their own little thing. So it's now, a lot of fun. I'm loving this table. This was, look, from the old industry type of thing. It's a fold down thing. It's amazing. I could tell that just looking at it. It's, it's got just, like a cutting board surface. It's sturdy, but lightweight. Exactly. Now, where did up? you get this? This was honestly, I don't know what it was. It was from where my work. Yeah. We, we went out of business. I just took it with me. But basically, yeah, the legs fold up. So I can't thing. offer you a link to this. This fell off a truck somewhere. But Pretty much, no. <laughs> but we were debating with, you know, it's bulky, that, but it fold down, fits it in, in the truck. No problem. It's easy. It's like a, you can place it anywhere you want. And it's also covers the cooler underneath, which is kind of rainproofing. Yeah. <laughs> so little things. Uh, I love the fact that you were you got a dealership for bushwhackers in Canada and you came down over the border. Yep. But you said uh, you're basically pretty light on modifications. I see you made some adjustments to the galley though. Yeah, kept the K2 cooler, which is just in the back of the truck. And we wanted the extra storage just for forks, knives, pots, pans, drawers, drawers. Go a long way. It goes a long way type of thing. Nice. And you know what? These like, lights came on the side like this? Yeah. Oh, that's different because a lot of them were up underneath this. Yeah. Is this what came with yours? Ours is standard. We didn't get the wood. We had the metal. So I actually really, really like this. If you've seen any of the Bushwhacker tours we've done, that particle board gets beat up yeah. on the corner. So this was a good... But it, as you can see, traveling, there's yeah. kind of a dent already. Everything breaks and gets beat up. <laughs> yeah. Use your furnace. Haven't yet, but I've burnt it out. Quick little mod that we've done. Like I said, that you might uh, like. Oh, I love it. Magnets. So Instead just of making the drawer, we've done the magnets. Amazon, like 12 bucks. Very smart. So that stays on on the road, but it gives you extra storage. Sure. They were boxing this in. Yep. And when you do start using the furnace, um, inevitably you have to tinker with it a little bit. Is that right? Um, I, I've been out a bunch with the furnace. It's not as bad as some people say, but you eventually, usually you have to get in and clean the sail switch or something. Okay. So really nice mod. Yeah. It's a simple thing. A couple of screws. Really now, easy. Now before you put that back, you sure. want to show us those dishes? Yeah. The dishes. It's like collapsible silicone. Collapsible stuff. Like I said, storage wise, my wife, Amazon, $20. You get a whole set. You know, if you're buying a teardrop camper, get Amazon Prime. Yeah. It's great storage. You know, anything you want, to, you know, a salad, something like that. Easy to be washable, foldable. Take up much space, and they look like they're real handy, easy to clean. Easy to clean. Very, very handy. Have you been using your water reservoir? Yes, we have. So it's, you kept the spray nozzle on there for dishes? Yeah, it's on our bucket list to get the other thing. But this is honestly for like washing your feet, yes. coming out of the, you know, out of the river and stuff like that. Works great. The only thing is my wife is not happy about it is it, it's powerful. Yeah. <laughs> the amount of power that comes out and it sprays. So you got to so be There's so many that. different mods for these. I actually put a ball valve on mine so I could step the flow down a little bit because yeah. it is... It is intense. I've joked about it's that a few times. It's a good water pump. Though. It's intense, but yeah, overall, it's it's been great, and we're gonna you know we're gonna hang on to it for sure. Nice as a thing, and get the faucet eventually. It's on our wish list to get sort of thing. So, have you been out much? Have you been camping with this? Is our first time out officially Whoa. from Canada. Bought the like I said last September. Slept in it at the cabin. Tested out the thing. Had to get another little three inch foam mattress, but. It's our first time out down at the boil in North Carolina. That's really nice. Now, I came about 750 miles, but you had to be a few hours north of me yet. So I Probably mean, another 250. Yeah, so you're our furthest, uh, I think our furthest guest at the North Carolina gathering this year. So yeah, congratulations on that. Now, you said you added memory foam. It looks like the mattress is a little lower. Did you remove the teddy bear? No, we kept the teddy bear, and all we did was add in... Like I said, little two inch. Oh, do you still have under the bed storage? Still do. Okay. So we've now is got to get to three inches plus an additional two, so a total of five inch. And you know what? Totally comfortable. We're happy with it. I I, I love this. And sometimes on the channel, we're showing bushwhackers that people have spent five grand on. They've modded them out. There's nothing wrong with that. I, it's a lot of fun. 
But bare bones, if you add some cushion to the mattress, it, it's a nice camper. We were okay with the teddy bear, huh? but we knew eventually over time it's going to sink. I'm it's, a big guy. Yeah, it's it going to sink it for a while. Weighs, huh? So that little extra foam, and it, it's breathable, so that's kind of nice too. So, I mean, the trailer has its corks. You know, you've been around the group for a while. You're familiar with them, but sure. it's important. Uh, the folks that are just into teardrop camping, it's light years above a tent. It's easy to travel with. Your first trip, you went a thousand miles. Yeah. It towed real well. It towed terrific. What we love about it the most from us, 10 minute setup. Yes. Max. Absolutely. Because we were doing, we have a Tacoma. We had the tent on the back. Nice. We had the mattress oh, inside. Nice. We were doing that. But the problem was you had to disassemble if you wanted to visit anything, do any hiking, go into town. This, it's literally just click, go, and you're done. So, so as fun. you're saying that, I can't help but to notice this 675-foot uh, mansion fifth wheel behind you. Um, I got um, some fix of that, too. From the, on, from the road. The two trailers. The two trailers. But, you know, ultimately, we want to spend time outdoors. And I'm not putting this down. You nope. know, it's something for everyone. But... You know, for us, and we told them, I said, like, look, if you want to put your tall horn down, yeah, I mean, you, you could park inside the toilet, <laughs> <laughs> back up inside it. But I mean, when you are, you know, this awning, yeah, is about what a lot of us are into because we came out here to spend time out here, not so much in here. We're just going in here to go to sleep, hundred percent. Yeah, so I, I'm impressed that. Our Canadian friends are not running the air conditioner. Uh, I am from New York. It's too hot here. But, uh, yeah, most of the time we're spending out here at the campground. 100%. So you going tubing with us tomorrow? 100%. Once again, if you can, make it to the boil. All right. We got a pig roast tonight and a shrimp boil tomorrow. But thank you so much. No problem. Thanks, Brian. And I uh, I appreciate getting to take your, a tour of your pretty much stock 10 HD. <laughs>